What up? What up? I need, I need that sports encyclopedia. We U.S. Steve Kim. Got trend to cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? In the gym shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting, John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to I love talking talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that that are like minded and and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. You are fucking insane. You dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is up? What is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. I gotta get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so fast, you don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said, that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? It is Talk That Talk Tuesday, and talk, and I will talk back. We got a loaded lineup. Big Matt McChesney joins us on an off-schedule day. He couldn't make yesterday. He's going to pop in today, plus Steve Kim, as normal on Tuesday. He's going to talk in. We'll talk a little boxing with him um, and uh, a little bit of historical background information that we're going to get on steve kim he's going to give us some background information on all the historical encyclopedia knowledge that he possesses in his brain he's going to break down is yukon the greatest back-to-back national champ ever we're going to dive into that but it is talk that talk tuesday so talk and i will talk back the coach ab show with big smitty brought to you by bet online prize picks Winnable.com slash slap picks. And of course, uh, bet online and prize picks are where you go to get your bets. Um, subscribe and become a member of our Discord Slap Nation, plus our winnable slap picks. Uh, they are hitting, and we will be making live picks today. Um, a few free ones and a few paid ones. Uh, you got to go over and become a member today. Big Matt will have his picks. Sean King will have his picks every week. Steve and I, plus all our guests, picks. Plus, we'll have Brandon Lang, Jeff Nadu on on Fridays to talk all things betting. NHL, MLB, NBA playoffs getting ready to come to a, a, a head here. So we're going to dive into all that stuff. So cappers from every sport, play with us, and you could be the next big winner. So subscribe to our first down plan today. Now let's dive into it, man. We got a loaded show. Uh we're going to do a mock NFL draft as well. Best available. Um, rumors out there that Malik Neighbors has a little shitbird in him. We're going to dive into that. That's what everyone says every year about every player. So we'll dive into that as well. But first things first. Why is it that the small nobodies in the world, the most vocal, are the most vocal? The small nobodies are the most vocal, and the big monsters, mainstream media, with the largest reach, are the most quiet. Why is that? Make it make sense. The NAIA bans trans athletes from women's sports yesterday on a 25 to 0 vote. Clap it up. The NAIA, the nobodies in the sports world. N-A-I-A banned the made-up humans um, from allowing them to participate in sports yesterday. 25-0. Shout out to everybody involved. Congrats to the minority speaking up for the majority. Takes balls in today's society. I'm glad someone has done it. Now, NCAA, take notes. Take notes. And be the leader of men and women the natural-born men and women, 
take charge and lead by example as your fucking mission statement says. Or are you just going to hide behind your contradictory ways? They all want the sausage, but refuse to watch how it's made. Do what's right. Make the call. Ban the madness once and for all. Do what's right. Make the call. Ban this madness once and for all. <laughs> I just dropped a bar colder than any bar Smitty's ever dropped on this show. <laughs> I can't wait. Let's get into the show. The Yukon Huskies are national champs. Uh, are they the greatest? Are they on the greatest run ever? No, they're not. Stop it. You recency biased people, stop it. Kentucky supposedly throws a blank check at Coach Hurley, as I stated yesterday on the show, to be its new coach. And the NAIA stand on business by banning trans from competing in women's sports. The Lakers face... Uh, off with the Warriors today and could be the NBA's first play-in schedule. Uh, you could get a glimpse tonight as the Lakers-Warriors head um, face off. But before we begin, my wonderful co-host, Ball State legend, Naptown's finest, 317's Far East Side great and AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving, LeBron hairline having, Fox Sports very own. Welcome the quiet one. Big Smitty. I turned down the clapping. I appreciate that, Jamie. I appreciate that, man. What's going on in the chat? I see Max Hess is in there making big money, big bread. I see Michael Davis is in there. Ron, I lost a little bit of money last night because y'all know I put money on Purdue, but it's all good. Scare money don't make no money. And listen, you know I'm quiet, but I'm powerful. One great poet once said these words. Real G's moving silence like lasagna, and I'm a real G. What's going on, JB? You know, they also said they also said that real G's don't wear titty and tongue rings. <laughs> I ain't got those either. <laughs> real G's don't wear titty and tongue rings. That is either. what the men wear now. This is the society we are in, Smitty. Oh, my goodness. We got a load of light up today. We're going to fight, argue, scrap. I mean, hopefully our virtual fighting could go in person. We get a studio, and, and, and you could see me, Sue Flex, <laughs> Big mm-hmm. Smitty, live on the set. If some, if he say something and something just jump off, we might just jump off right to a scrap. I don't know. But you said Sue Flex me, Sue Flex me, or I was Sue Flex you? I mean, not Sue Flex me. <laughs> You never okay. even get me off the ground. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twenty <laughs> Division One players couldn't get me in the lake. You think you could? <laughs> I mean, uh, your, your, your players were kind of kind of soft. You know, he's coaching uh, soul. <laughs> so much about Bet Online, Smitty. Let's get into it right away. BetOnline.ag. What up? What up? What up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today, become part of the team, and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. Quote of the day. Brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, Smitty, telling the truth and making someone cry is better than telling a lie and making someone smile. Mm, not, in, not in every situation, JB. Not in every situation. Majority situations, I agree. Not every situation. Sometimes it's cool to just, I think there's sometimes it's cool to lie. Very rare. Very rare. Very, very rare. But there's certain times where it's like, you know what? Ain't no point of me even really even saying how you were looking at dress me, right now. When, give me an example when you lie. I shouldn't even I shouldn't even say it. like JB, you asked me the other day, you, 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 you said, hey homie, 
Hey, I just, I just bought this, I just bought this shirt. I just bought this shirt, man. It, it, how it look? Like, it's a cool blood. Like, I don't want to go out here looking crazy. And then my head, I'm like, man, this motherfucker look crazy as hell. He look titties hanging out, stomach fat. I'm like, it's my homie, man. He's about to share. He feeling good about himself. I'm like, you good, JB. Like, you straight. Like, you, you good, homie. And you feel good. It puts you in a good mood, good spirit. And, and, and confidence breeds excellence. In that moment, I had to make a decision. Oh, what are you trying to sound like? <laughs> what are you trying to sound like? You're from LA, Mo? Like, Mo, you listen to this motherfucker, Mo? Oh, homie. Oh, it's a really good actor. Um, hey, hey, JB, when JB get around, I'm around this. You never ask no man about no shirt I wear. <laughs> when, when, JB get, when JB get around his Cali homies. Oh, set my stomach out. <laughs> When JV get around his Cali homies, all he say is homies. Like when he get around his best friends and stuff, like homie. Like he say homie like a million times. I'm gonna start saying it now. Like that's my new word, now, homie. I'm gonna start saying homie every fucking sentence. All right, homie. Yeah, homie. Oh, it's, and when you say it, it's kind of like you mean you're serious. You're about you're about business. Yeah. Hey, homie. Like hey, I gotta make it natural though. <laughs> you don't say it. You don't really say it unless you like arguing at the barbershop or you pooping or. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, just shit like that. Arguing on this show um, when I got to go at Matt or something about Colorado. Contrary to belief, um, brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over to Prize Picks. Use the Coach JB promo code. Uh, the truth is that everybody is going to hurt you, Smitty. Dang. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. <laughs> Everybody's going to hurt you, Smitty. Contrary to belief. You just got to find the ones worth hurting for. Clap it up. That's a bar. I ain't found that one. I ain't found that one. <laughs> That's some of your best work right there. That's some of your I best work. I ain't found that one. <laughs> you ain't found that one? No. A.E.? A- no. A.E.? What A.E.? Contrary to the poll question. Poll question. Drop it in the comment section below. Is UConn the best back-to-back champs ever? Ooh, you added that into it. Yeah, back-to-back champs. Not We know they're not the best team ever. Are they the best back-to-back champs ever? I love when I see recency bias media. That's what I start to call them. You all call them new media? I'm going to start calling them recency bias media. The recency bias media, Draymond Green, everybody on TikTok, Everybody on TikTok, uh, majority of Instagram, Facebook, or not Facebook, Instagram and Twitter um, are all recency bias cats. That means they only see what they have and they only know what's recent. Uh, Smitty's even falls into that category. Not his fault, but by age alone, by age alone, there's just certain things you just don't have any clue about because it's just impossible. You weren't there. So. Can't study. That's no, see, that's what I'm okay with, Smitty. Every day we argue. I'm fine with you not knowing, but it's when you say, not just you. No, call me out. Call me out. No, nah, but when your generation says, no, nah, hell no, nah. he ain't that, he ain't, he ain't LeBron. And I'm like, really? So you saw these, pla- and then they straight up say it with no, no hesitation, Smitty. No, nah, I ain't seen him, but I just know. I'm like, no, that's the dumbest, most ignorant shit I could ever, I can ever listen to. Like a cat tells me straight out, sweetie, I I truly believe this generation, the one under you, has zero value for life, zero value for Mm -hmm. anything regarding anything. And I think they really will straight up just tell you how they feel. And it's the most ignorant shit I've ever seen. They'll just tell you, though, because that's how, like, I don't know if it's cocky, arrogant, or just flat out dumb. Mm. I don't know which one they fall under, dog. Like, it's one of them. But damn, I feel I, I feel that part about the generation thing. But real quick, like we always had had this argument. I understand that certain things I didn't, I wasn't born to see, or, or I was a baby. There's certain things you weren't born to see, or you were a baby, but you still have well, you knowledge on it, because you can't say it's fact. Then. But but can, can I can I read up on stuff? Can I like is, is it impossible to learn about stuff? Like no, oh, but you can't say facts if you never saw it, and you can only you're only basing your facts off of a YouTube one clip. <laughs> like that's what we see too much of. 
I I'm hear you, but I really be I really be studying stuff though. Like if it matters to me, like I really go in, I read about it, I read articles about it, I watch documentaries. Like I, you know, what I'm saying like Steve Kim knows a lot about a lot of shit that he wasn't born to see, but because he's so he just went and did the work yeah. to study it. I mean, like I, I, like I could be ignorant. I could be the same person that the old heads talking. The old head, old old heads, like mm -hmm. let's say born pre or fifth, 1950 on. I'm a 70s baby. I'm 76, almost 80, right? Pre like from 50 on. They're probably looking at me too. I know they look at me, call me young ass, young boy, right. little kid, little boy. But they also, they're probably looking at me like I don't know anything either. And I look at them and I could be totally a hypocrite and ignorant. Like we we know for a fact, this is a fact, the athletes have gotten better generation by generation by generation. We never saw Jordan. We did see some guys, but we never saw really a Jordan. And we never saw really a Kobe. We never saw LeBron. We never saw these guys, Westbrooks, and these guys right, that we're seeing wrong. all these freaks of nature. Football the same way. Now, was the game better? Maybe. Was it tougher? For sure. Was it uh, harder to attain and get there? Probably. Mm -hmm. But the, the athlete, no question, is better. But they're softer, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Now, I ain't going to ever say it's fact because I wasn't there. But I don't look at anything like pre-1950 and really pay it any mind because it's just not enough research out there for me to do. There's right. no YouTube videos. There's hard to find NFL films on it, NBA fucking clips, whether it's a real or black and white. So I don't even try to discuss it. It's just too far back. I, I, I'd rather stay. What year was you born? 80 what? Or 70 Seven. what? 76 or so anything before 76 you can't really discuss then technically well not you can still find nba video you can still find shit in 70s from you can still find great clips from the 70s like george gervin and cats like we've had some greats on this show like know, you can find what... video i'm talking about from the 50s and shit you ain't yeah, gonna yeah. find it so i i kind of stay out of that era i try to stay from 70 to on because i can still do research uh, and i've done research i found out i've seen film i've seen enough video but after before that i just hard to find so i stay away from you never hear me talk about anything pre fucking 70 on this show you never heard me talk about it you've heard me talk about the great you know jim thorpe maybe one of the greatest athletes ever i never saw him i couldn't tell you what the, he played every sport did everything won the olympic all that shit. i never saw him right like, I would willing to bet he'd probably get smoked by the 15 year old homie right here on the street now, and he might go down as the greatest athlete ever. So I don't know. I try to stay away from it, but that's just that's just me. But anyway, I hear you. I hear you. that's just me. Um, back to the topic. My fault. I got you all over the place now. Pause. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. What was the topic? I think we were talking about um, best back-to-back -back national champions. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, back to my recency bias claim and take. I already got my answer. I know. It's the recency bias that claims that these – I've heard already that UConn – I had to go out with my boy Chase Sr. last night, younger, your age guy. He was like, we're witnessing the greatest run of all time. I, had a, I said, youngster, Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> He gave me, he gave me the, uh, he gave me the fist with the hands. <laughs> yeah. Look. Uh, I said, stop. UCLA won 10 out of 12, homie. 10 out of 12. They called the, the, they called the NCAA tournament, the UCLA Invitational. Mm. They used to have a sign up that said, welcome to the UCLA Invitational. They won seven straight, Smitty. What? Seven natties in a row. At one point, when are you like, fuck, we got to beat these motherfuckers? Like, when are you going to be? Smitty, they won 88 games in a row before Lou Alcindor had a patch over his eye and Elgin Baylor got lucky at Houston and beat them. And then they went out and won it all again and smoked them in the tournament. So, like, 88 games in a row will never be matched. Seven straight, 10 out of 12. Right. So, now... Different era, super different era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the you most know. recent UCLA championship is 95, and they have been to a finals and final fours 
in the last 10, 12 years. They've been a three. So in the century, in my opinion, like the new turn of the century. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, because technically speaking, uh, like no one can argue seven straight. That's that's no, technically no, no. that's always going to be the answer. Technically, yeah. But, like, but they're already saying this is the greatest run ever. See, that's the thing I get pissed about. You can't say ever then. Gotcha. Say your era. Say my generation. Say something to where you don't trigger cats to say ever. Because ever is a ever is inf- infinite. True, but it's kind of like I'm, I'm gonna compare it to NBA real quick. Like, okay, if you ask who, like, which team was the greatest team of all time, te- you probably should technically say the Boston Celtics when they had Bill Russell. Technically, they had 11 rings. That, that, that should probably be everybody's universal answer. But context matters, and and the way the league was set up, and the competition, and who they're playing against, how many teams, and like certain things do matter. So I do think sometimes you can, I, like, I don't know if the rings or championships always just gives you the answer per se like because just because you kind of went back to back right now don't mean that, that they're the best there's other teams that went back to back and had way better rosters like i'm gonna just say my answer of, of my generation that 07 florida team with joe kim noah and brewer and al horford phenomenal i think that team was smoked as you that, that team, team- and just me being a sports nut that I am, that I know sports, yep. is no sport. that team, I think, returned everybody. From 06 winning it to 07, yep. I believe they returned everyone. This team actually lost five NBA players from last year's UConn team, and I think they have pretty much new roster intact this year. And right. the culture, did, that's why I say about the culture, this one I talk about Dion and Prime and in Colorado, culture matters. Like, it, it's a plug-and-play system. Alabama had new players every year. George is doing it now. Clemson did it for three, four, five years in a row in, on a run when they won two natties. The culture is always going to be there. Now, to Dion's ex- d- uh, defense, the game has settled, it's changed every year. Yep. And now we're getting more and more mercenary. It, it's in a more and more mercenary business. The NIL, the NCAA's refusal flat out to pay anybody and play uh, judge, jury, and executioner has caused a lot of things to change. But at the end of the day, if you're going to build your program laterally, as Sean King says, instead of vertically, like everyone has to do. See, in JUCO, you build it laterally, but you put a you put a culture in, bit in place, and you say whoever comes in this culture is going to adhere to this culture. <laughs> Real mm-hmm. simple. You can't do that in a four-year institution and build laterally and and only expect to work in increments of twos like a JUCO. So I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but if you, if you build laterally, you can only build up laterally for two years, in my opinion, because you can only get two years of talent in a row right. that allows you to have one good year of success. You need four years, to really build. which is like building vertical – and you can't do lateral and not recruit high school. You just can't do it. We're going to talk to Matt about that, but I just want to give you that segue because it's a similar fashion. Like UConn has a culture in place, and whoever came into that UConn culture this year knew it. They knew it from whoever was there last year. Whether they played or not, the culture was intact, and these guys bought in to Hurley, and they win again. New team, same result. They beat San Diego State last year, I think 76-59. Pretty comfortably, I believe, yeah. They won last night 75-60. Almost the exact same score versus a brand-new team and new players. Culture does matter when you build vertical, and UConn's done it. So back to the, the back-to-back thing, I agree that Florida team was probably more talented Um Here's the issue I have with this whole back-to-back thing. This generation or era, the last 20 years, I think UConn just passed Duke, by the way, in natties. I think mm-hmm. they only trail North Carolina and UCLA now and Kentucky. They they trail North Carolina, Duke, and I mean, North Carolina, Kentucky, and UCLA. Um, they passed Duke. Yeah. Which wow. is a monumental t- feat. Here, here's my take on the UConn thing. I believe over the last... Turn of the century from 1999, let's just say 99, which was turned into 20. Uh, my daughter was born in 99, and that's why I remember this. 
They've won six. The men and women combination is the greatest sport, uh, the greatest basketball school in uh, in in the in the modern day history. And I agree I, with that, hundred percent, no argument. UConn is the best basketball program when you discuss men and women, top to bottom, in my lifetime. In my oh, lifetime, seventy six yeah. on, as far as men and women combined. I was just I was thinking that I was thinking about that last night, JB, watching uh, the men celebrate. And I was like, the first thing that came to my mom was like, dang, like the women was doing this like my whole life growing up, it felt like. Even this year, in a down year, technically, they're in the final four. And they had what like four of their star, like key players get injured at the beginning of the year and still made the final four. I agree with you hundred percent, man. Like I feel like, especially in was it high school for me or middle school, it seemed like every single year UConn was winning and they had like was it two or three damn near undefeated seasons or or, or year they made they might have lost one game in three years? Like it was it was complete dominant. North like Carolina's we, trying to do it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you kind of went, I think, two or three years straight undefeated. I think uh, it was like three almost. Yeah. It might have been I three. I think they did they did they three or four Pete women? Man. I don't it, know. It might have been four uh, because um Brianna Stewart got like four rings, I think. Yeah, I I mean it's and Maya Moore got some rings. You said what? How many rings does Gino Ariama have? I don't know. I have to look that up real yeah, quick. Yeah, they did a four, Pete. Yeah, because Brianna got four. Yeah, so I don't know how many rings Gino has. Um, what does he have? Does he have I six? They got a. They got a. Uh, they got eleven. Gino Ariama has eleven. Yeah, he got eleven. Twelve. <laughs> he has eleven rings, so he's there with John Wooden. <laughs> That's why I tell you guys that Gino Ariyama is the guy that I would always go want to hear and talk to. Um, so he's got 11 rings, apparently. Um, so <laughs> Don Staley got a lot of work to do, and she's the she's the new Gino Ariyama right now. Um, so we'll see. She's dominating the women's side right now. Uh, Pat Summit, I believe, has what, six, seven? I'm not sure. My old boss played with Pat Summit and uh, obviously the 84 Olympics um, deal. Um, Pat was on or coached in or whatever. Um, 11 rings is crazy. Yeah, that's John Wooden esque. Um, but he's doing it like, in, like he's doing it in this era too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like it's just like the era of. Well, I ha he hasn't won in this, this. See, I think the era has changed already. And since what you're discussing, yeah. I don't know. I think it's changed already. I think it's changing. That's a good point. Like this Deion Sanders era is a different era, I believe, than Nick Saban era. It's already changed, in my opinion, because of point. the portal, NIL, the everyday, the constant change of what the NCAA, they put their foot in, Smitty, and then they're like, oh, fuck, it's too hot. And they pull it out. And then they put their other foot in, and they're like, oh, it's too cold. And they pull it out. And, like, the NCAA is never – they can't fucking get out of their own way. They can't figure it out. So I believe the, the, the era changing every day. Like, it's changing every day. I don't know if Gino will win another one. Greatest coaches ever, in my opinion. I don't know if he can win another one in this era because he's probably a little bit stuck in the old school, my JB ways. And I think Gino falls under that same Nick Saban – Coach K, hmm. uh, these other guys that are getting out of the four-year level to go to the NBA or the NFL, I think Gino falls under that. Now, is he is he egotistical enough to try to get one more? He got to the Final Four. I, I, I say he's in the Final Four. He was like, JB, he was, I know you don't, you, you you don't watch team. women like that, but he was like a play away. It wasn't like no. no like, I know. <laughs> but you look at that team. So they would have got blown out in South Carolina. Like, uh, the thing is, like, you're looking at that team and you're like, they, they just, they're not even close to South Carolina. And I know enough about women's watching his great UConn teams mm -hmm. and the great Tennessee with the whole claws and the, and the, and the, and the Candace Park. They're, those teams are all different. There's no way I would love to see him win one more and go out like that, but I just don't know if he's re willing to play ball. And that, all, all I'm gonna say is this though, JB. Don't be surprised if that if that next ring happens next year. Like again, they had five, I think four or five, correct me if I'm wrong, four or five key injuries happen in the beginning of the season, one of which is like one of their star, like star guards. 
Paige and Becker. Yeah, Paige Beckers is coming. Four or three players in America. Paige Beckers is coming back next she, year, and she's one of the. She might be her and Juju. Her and <laughs> yes. Juju will probably be the best. The best two, exactly. And she's coming back, and and and, and they're still recruiting. Probably UConn always gets like at least one top player. They already have the number one player in the country. Number one player in the country. Paige Beckers return. Like, don't be surprised. I might put a hot hundred dollars on UConn winning next year. I see about this the, the other day. Like, why not? Like a, a futures bet. I think they could win it next year. I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah, we'll see. But Juju is scary, though. I ain't gonna lie. Juju, Juju, she next up. She is. So Took SC to a one seed this year. UCLA is really good too. Stanford's really good. Notre, Notre Dame was always good. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, all right, Smith. So let's dive into brass tacks here. Uh, Big Matt will join us in about thirty. Steve Kim an hour after that. Um. But let's dive into another take that'll make me out to be the devil. Okay. Uh, I love it. I'm like quick to <laughs> – any heat that's off him, he quick to – let's dive into this, Smitty. Charlotte Hornets are interviewing a woman oh, for the next man. coaching job. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets have been granted permission to interview Lindsey Harding, the coach of the G League Stockton Kings. We talked about last week on the show that she is the coach of the year. Uh, if Harding is hired, she would become the first woman to be named head coach of an NBA team. Your take. First of all, shout. Carefully. Don't keep carefully. Think carefully and just go right, right into it. Sweetie. I'm just giving you a warning. Shout out to Lindsey Harding for just getting an opportunity. Nothing has happened yet. All they did is ask to seek permission to interview her. She's not the first woman to ever get interviewed by an NBA team. It's happened before. She's not the first one. San Antonio Spurs had Becky Hammond as their longtime assistant, but she also got interviewed for by the Magic, the Pacers, the Portland Trailblazers, all before deciding to go to the WNBA and coaching for the Aces. All this is an interview. Everyone online is losing their mind. Or, oh, my gosh, a woman. Ah, what do we do? All it is is an interview, y'all. And I would say this. She's earned at least that. As you mentioned, JB, she's the head coach of the G League's, the Stockton Kings. How, how she earned it? Explain. I'm about to break it down right now. She's been the head coach of the Stockton Kings, the Sacramento Kings G League affiliate. Let me break it down. This season, they were a number one seed in the playoffs, made it to the Western Conference Finals. They, they, The team, they did this after they had to cut their center, who was their starting center, then Chance Kamachi, because he was arrested for murder. So think about being a head coach and having to, to move pieces around and in the middle of the season and be able to keep guys motivated and focused and locked in to still become a number one seed and still make it to the West Conference Finals. She did that before she was even with Stockton. She was an assistant coach for the Kings back in 2019. Before she was assistant coach there, she was a personnel scout and player development coach for the Philadelphia 76ers. Not to mention she was a former number one overall pick in the WNBA and spent the decade hooping in the league, played for multiple teams, played in the, played in the finals. So she not only – I, I hear you rambling. Game. She's I hear you rambling game. on. She's done all of that, JB. So when I, I say I, I hear you rambling, she earned it. I hear you rambling. I'm, t- I'm still waiting to hear how she earned to be a head coach in the NBA. Keep going. I want to hear that. This is the process of what you do. You start. You start oh. in small roles: personnel, scouting department, oh. assistant so coach, G, G, G League head coach. These are the things oh. that you do to get. She hasn't really earned. Let's be honest. She hasn't really earned that. Interview to be a man's head coach in the NBA. Then, uh, well, I guess I guess we think differently then, JB. I don't know what route you took to become to become a head coach, but I, I'm I had to assume it was like high school stuff or assistant. You have to do little smaller jobs to get to that point. That's exactly what she did. So I don't, well, I don't, I don't know what it is. Well, I also, you also what say it had a penis and coached men. <laughs> there you go. I'm so I'm so glad. You know what? I respect. Let's clap it up for JB before he even starts, because I respect the man. Let's clap it up. He was a, I'm a straight shooter, and I'd rather you just tell me like it's like a T.I. is. When, when, when this topic got brought up yesterday in our group chat, I was like, man, let, let's cut the chase. Like, I don't want to I don't want to hear all the she's taking away opportunities from men and black men at that. You should be mad. Or no, I'm not mad because that's not that's not the brass tax. The brass tax is you don't care if she coached for 30 years prior to this. You still going to say that a woman should be coaching a man's sport. I just call it what it is. Uh, yes. You, you good? And I respect you. I'm good. Take over. 
I don't believe a woman should coach a man in as a head coach. Let me rephrase it. I don't believe a woman should coach a man in as a head coach um, in any sport of, a, of any men's sport. I don't believe a woman should coach men as a head coach in any sport. I'm on record to say that I believe women should and could coach in the NBA. I'm on record. I said they play the same exact game, the yes. same rules, the same uh, – everything is the same in the NBA. Five on five, there's zone, there's matchup, there's man, there's zone, there's motion. There's uh, the same rules. I have no issue. Becky Hamm has been great with San Antonio. She's done this, the same things and more, much, much more than this girl who just finished her first year. So we'll dive into that in a second. But I do not believe Becky Hammond should be the NBA head coach. <laughs> I believe she should be a – to me, a woman being an assistant in the NBA has, has, has leaps and bounds above what we used to ever see in this world. It is. I believe that's a huge stride, and I believe that is what the precipice is, meaning the elite top of the top. That is the max climax of a woman in this position. I believe a woman's max occupancy and max out occupation at the professional level should be an assistant in the men's league. In the men's league. I don't believe a woman can get here's a, and I'm gonna and this is a deep topic. We'll talk about it, I'm sure, until we get into Matt here. Uh pause. So here's the thing. We have created a society of beta males, and this is what I told you yesterday in private chat. Smitty and I actually discussed this yesterday, just so to keep it real out there. We actually talked about this yesterday in the chat because we were just diving into it, and both of us automatically disagreed, of course, and that's fine. The bigger picture, which Smitty even agreed to, that he didn't really think about too deep, in which, you know me, as an older person, I've been around the block, so I see things that move certain ways, and I see how people manipulate certain situations. And society, I believe, is being manipulated as we speak. We create beta males for one reason, and that reason is to control those beta males. The less alpha male you have on the block, the more controlling and more intrusive you can become. I mean, I could take over your block if it's a bunch of beta males or or a bunch of females, which mm -hmm. will automatically fall under the beta category. Let's just keep it real. There's alpha females, sure. But that means a beta male allowed that alpha female to take control. <laughs> Let's just keep it 100 or 1,000 or whatever you want to say. Now, having said that, we're creating an all-inclusive, all-inclusive world that I don't believe should exist because it's all fine and dandy until a woman needs that protection, until that woman needs to break up a man's fight, until that woman needs to put the law down and just can't do those things. It just doesn't exist, Smitty. It's not their nature. It's not who they are. It's not what it is. This all-inclusive thing is just becoming, dare I say it, uh, we're creating we're creating boys. Let, let, let me ask you this. Just get off topic. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that a boy needs a man at some point in his life to teach him how to be a man? 100%. Somebody. If it's not your father, you need somebody, some type of grandfather, uncle, coach, some, some type of example. I agree with that 100%. So then if you agree 100%, how can you agree that this woman is the best option to coach men in a men's professional league? Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is I, it's not a it's not a matter of saying she is the best option because the one argument we had in our chat was that what about all the other men that she's passing up on who's, who's former champions or former coaches and et cetera. And my response to that is you can always have an argument that when a coach gets – higher whether it's higher excuse me whether it's a man female whatever we can always say that that person got hired over someone with more experience or, or who's more deserving etc so like i just think that, that it's not about saying she's the best option 
I'm but you're moving the goalposts. She has, done, she has, she has done the work to earn to earn an interview. Is all I'm saying. That's all yeah, I'm but saying. you're moving the goalpost without think. I don't think you realize what you're doing. You're not moving on purpose, maybe, but you're moving it. You keep mentioning men have been. T- we've been. We've had guys leaped over for other guys. We're talking about a female here specifically. Let's stay. Let's make sure we're clear. We're talking about a female head coach coaching men. In what used to be a very physical game, we're creating this over time. This is just my opinion, and, and this is what I have seen through my 48 years. I am seeing a, a, a clear and direct path that we have created as a government, as society, as whatever. I don't know. I'm not that deep into politics, but what we are creating is an all-inclusive, everyone belongs in everything world. And that's just not the truth. It's and not I, the truth. And, and I am with you on that. Like, I'm at, with you on that. At some point, we're going to have an all-female army? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I, it, it just certain things. Like, there's certain things men should not dive into with females, and there's certain things females should not dive into. And I've said it. I think females can coach men. I am on record. I have sat down in a room yeah, you with Nick Leslie. Yeah, and saw her with Joe Johnson, <laughs> with Stephen Jackson, yes. with some 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 pretty big egos. Yes, but let's be clear: you're talking about one of the greatest legendary female basketball players of all time. Okay, but in a in a in a semi professional league, let's be honest here, dog. This isn't the NBA. There's a reason she didn't get a job in the NBA. A semi pro big three, which to be honest, let's be honest, it's a it's an afterthought. It's a good gimmicky league to keep guys afloat. Five, ten grand a game. Uh, I've been around it. Love it. I love the concept. But it's not the NBA, Smitty. It's three on three. It's pickup basketball. And it's a fun thing. When those women were hired, you know damn well it was a let's good, good attraction, equitable, yeah, all inclusive hire, ice cube made. Let's be real. But, but yeah, I that's true. Her. But finish your statement, though. Finish your statement. You said you was in locker room and what? No, I am. I'm telling her. And I told her straight out to her face. We took videos and pictures together. I said, I'm impressed as shit, Coach uh, Lisa. I said, I loved how you commanded them on the court. I love how you commanded them and thing. Now, I remind you, though, these are 40-plus-year-olds okay. that have been through all the shit and are going to respect a woman. Way different than a 18 year old out of college in the NBA telling a woman, okay, coach, like that he don't even know. I it just is you can say all you want, but if you don't think there's a clear and concise difference, there is, dog. There's a huge difference in a cat that respects women who has daughters already at their age, who understands it, been through the league, knows they're just playing for shits and giggles versus an NBA 18, 21 year old kid who's already, we already know how fucked up they are, to buy into a woman in the NBA? Listen, I'm all for a woman coaching in the NBA. I just don't believe a woman should be the head coach because when the shit hits the fan, there's going to be things that a woman just can't teach a man. Just like a woman can't raise a boy to be a man by herself. She needs another man at some point in their life. Like, I just think we're making it about inclusive, about everyone belongs, and it's not the facts, Mitty. I just think bigger picture. I'm trying to forward think here, and I just I, I don't want to I don't want to say I can't wait. I want to say when it happens. I told you so. I told you that it's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than football. It's bigger than what we're talking about. It's about creating a bunch of beta males. And if that's the conversation, JB, then that's a, to me, it's a separate conversation. And I, and I can lean on that side with you. But if we're keeping it just focused on the sport itself and, and why I think women can coach the sport, it's for everything you said about Lisa Leslie. She's not the only person just because I, I know how we know how great she is. Duh. But the the best coaches all the time ain't ain't the best players. So just because you're an all time great don't mean that you're the only woman who can command the room there's a lot of women that can command the room man that can that can command and demand respect so, so go back and to the, the one, point of the conversation the one then. go back to the point of conversation that we're yeah. having then. oh yeah 
She's interviewing for the Charlotte Hornets head coaching job. Yes, sir. What bumps her ahead of Mark Jackson? What bumps her ahead of a bunch of college coaches who already coached in the NBA? I don't know. Bumped her he- ahead of Becky Hammond, another female, if we're all going to be keep it real and talk about other females that have got a much better resume. What bumped her ahead of... Well, Becky Hammond already got interviews by team, so I don't know if she got bumped ahead. Again, it's just an interview. She hasn't got hired, y'all. She got interviews. It's an interview. Let's Becky Hammond honest. got interviewed. She interviewed four times. We didn't, we didn't do Please. all this. How many do you think interview? How many I, people do you think interview for professional probably, jobs? Probably, probably five or six per five team. Five or I six, I maybe, max. And if that... I would be surprised if it's even five or six. But I'm saying so Becky Hammond six, done this too, though. So five or six humans on this planet Earth get yes. the interview. Yes. I used it's, to a, tell it's, a, it's a small day. pool of guys who can even the qualify for the job. Small is not even the word, Smitty. It's it's minute. So it's so, so absolutely let's crazy. Not say, let's not say humans on this Earth because most humans can't even ain't even in a position to do that. Let's let's yeah. break it down Here's to what the, the pool even is. Five or six <laughs> people on this Earth. Get an interview for a professional job. The NFL, there's 32 jobs open. You're one of 32. Just imagine that. You're one of 32 on this whole planet. NBA, the same thing. And when you interview for those jobs, you are literally five or six humans on earth to even get the interview. I used to tell my coach, I'll interview as much as you can. They are priceless. They are absolutely priceless to interview, to get the interview process. Don't matter if you fell at it. You get to see it, learn it, mm-hmm. see the mannerisms of other people, uh, administrators, get to see how administrators operate behind the scene. You get to see what the questions are like. Are they just a bunch of Googleable questions, which are now yes, um, or are they really well thought out questions about really hands-on based situations that's going to affect the inner city kids that you're going to interview in? Or if you're rich, rich white area, how do you, uh, the fluent area, how do you intermingle with those guys? It all changes. So interviews are priceless. This is a lady, respect to her, who's jumping over the process, jumping over probably hundreds of people that are qualified because, let's keep it real, she's a female. It's all inclusive now. We want to be good. We want to sell tickets. We want to be popular. When we're really crippling the alpha male sporting world, as we know it. And in five years from now, you're going to have NFL head coaching females. You're going to have NBA coaching females. You're going to have an all-inclusive deal. You're going to have a female kicker. You're going to have all this shit. You're going to have a trans playing in the NBA. And we're going to look back at this day and say, fuck, man, what did we create? And if that happens, JB, then I will stand on the side with you if that happens. But like, it'll be too late, Smitty. but, But I guess what I'm saying is, I'm trying to explain it the right way. At some point, you have to you have to like put a cap on 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 whatever the this topic is, whatever the, the thing is. So like, a, just because a woman is coaching doesn't mean I agree that transgender should go play in the sport, or doesn't mean like that's a that's a far that's a far. Now I hear what you're saying that that could be the bigger plan of what they're trying to do. That's not what I'm saying. I agree with it all. I I'm, I hear you on the alpha male and all that stuff. You have some, I agree. There's some points there that. Over the last few years, they've been trying to feminize uh, the, the the society in general. I see all that, but it's like it's like we're punishing women right now who I believe have earned the opportunity to interview and be in position to possibly coach because we're afraid of what it might lead to. We're pushing we're pushing them today because of what it might lead to, and I just don't think that's right. Especially, especially basketball, like football. I, I was like, okay, I, I understand a little bit more. But like basketball, again, they play the sport, they know the sport. They're just a little, they're, they're just less athletic. They can't dunk. But other than that, it's the same type of scheme, the plays. And again, you, you, when, there's women out here who can motivate and inspire. One of your biggest points that you made was that can a, like, do you believe a woman or do you believe a man, a, a boy at some point needs a man to lead him to become a man? Yes, I do. But at the NBA, the professional level. You need to be a grown ass man. This is pro. This ain't this ain't college. This ain't high school where I'm trying to build and trying to teach you. You're a grown ass man making millions of dollars. You need to be. You need to already be a man right now. And if you're not one, that's your problem. I don't believe, in my opinion, it's an NBA's coach or an NFL coach job to teach you how to be a man at that point. 
that should have been done at Alabama, Tennessee, UConn, at JUCO, Ball State, or in high school. That work should have been done then, not at the pro level. And I'm paying you million. I'm paying you millions of dollars to be a man. No, you gotta be a man now. And if you can't respect women, you if you don't, if you wasn't taught how to respect women at that point in your life, God leave. Think Smith, about me, you're JB. You're talking in circles, though. You're actually just contradicting what we talk about on the show with John Calipari leaving Kentucky and his one and dones. They're not ready for college. They're not ready to be men. And yet we wonder why John Calipari can't win. You just said it right now. And now you expect them just to go to the NBA and get a check and turn into a grown man. Well, what? Hey, well, they haven't been taught shit yet. Sound, sound, you, like, sound like a bigger woman, problem than, than women coaching you want a man. woman to co- teach them how to be a man. You want a woman just to say, hell, all right, here we go. I just, said, I, I just said no. I just said no. I don't want that. If you're making grown right, man you decisions, it. you need to make you to mature fast, is what I'm fucking saying. You I, I know you don't want it. That, that's what I'm saying. saying <laughs> it's okay. And that is the problem. Stand for something, fall for anything. That's what we're doing. In five years, you said you're going to stand next to me and agree. Well, it's going to be too late. We'll never be able to get it back. You're uh, going to be snagged. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm going to agree. No, no, no. That, that's, I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to agree on this particular take as far as women shouldn't coach. I'm saying if it leads to a point where everything you're saying is going to go to shit and it's just trans, everything trans doing this and that, then at that point I would agree with all of the extra shit. But again, back to my point that I said, we 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 shouldn't punish somebody now because we're afraid of what it might lead to. That's 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 what that's really what you're saying. I don't even think you have a true blue real problem with a woman coaching in basketball. I don't really because you've already said that you don't mind them coaching. You just don't want being head coach. Like okay, that's just. I just one step further. No, no, not no, a head coach. That's one step further. Like, okay. Like, head so you, coach is the most influential. <laughs> so, so you could be the assistant head coach, but you can't be the head coach. Like, okay. So, all right. So, like, yes. Okay. I'm just saying to me, you know, damn well, me, that's a huge difference. To me, you're not as adamant on the basketball side as you are football. You straight you ain't no ain't nothing. Basketball, you, you, you really, you're like a step away from being on my side. So, all I'm saying is you're punishing that you, you, you're punishing them. Because you think it's going to lead to all type of crazy shit. It's like, well, I, I, mean, I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to lead to get, that. <laughs> I don't get how. Dang, I'm loud. I'm about to get fucking kicked out. Golly. You ain't that loud. I can't. I don't know how you you can't see for, I guess, your foresight. I don't know how you're going to see this. Like, I don't see how you don't see the, the feminization of sport. I do see have it. You, I do see it. In front of our very eyes. Like, it's happening. And. I've never seen a leader of men be a woman in my life. I, I, I've yet to see a leader of men be a woman. Well, you see it all the time in, in the black households. I, no, you see it out of necessity, Smitty. Oh, you don't oh, see yeah, it. Out but you of, see it, though. I'm just saying you see it. I didn't say it was good or bad. It just, you, it, you yeah, see it. but what happens to those men at the end of the day? Like, I, I, I'm on record. I, I recruited most single mothers. I tell right. them fucking unbelievable job that you do, ma'am. Unbelievable right. job. You raising three, four kids with three, four jobs. Like, fuck, trust me. I know. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, like that right. Like, they women, I don't know. I think, I just think, and I, I'm not saying you're consciously doing this. I just think we're just devaluing, like, what, what these women like women are listen i know men we're the alphas we're the king i believe it i believe like we, we were here first i believe it's supposed to be a pecking order but at the same time like that's not act like women are just like women are valuable we need women here like women can do a lot of shit men are the, they can't. Men, men, men are the leaders of course i'm not saying they can't but like we talk like women just like oh my like like Y'all talking in this chat like I'm crazy. Why, why are you moving it? Why Boy, are you moving the because post? like talking about head coaching? Y'all make, y'all make me sound like I'm crazy for what I'm saying. Like like like, like I'm just. Dog, you're talking like, about a head coach of a men. I know like, what I'm like. What we're talking about? Am I psycho for saying that though? Like am I am yeah, I loony to? Uh, like, am I loony to? Very, for, like you're like, very like it's it's weird to me that you really think a woman can coach a man in a professional league like. I'm being honest. I don't know why you think I, – I don't think you're psycho. I think it sounds very, very peculiar. I don't understand how you, who played Division One football, thinks that a woman can coach men in a professional you sport head league. Coach, we're talking, let's keep it on basketball right now. You said head coach of basketball. I said professional sports league. Let me ask you this thing real quick. Because before, I, before you say that, okay, no woman that I know of has yet 
has yet to prove to me at least, okay, <laughs> that she can coach men in anything. Other how, than but how do you prove it? Ideally. Can't prove it, Smitty. It doesn't exist. It does. It shouldn't exist. Why are we all inclusive? Why are we trying it out, Smitty? Like, like I'm gonna tell my boy Roy, who comes over and films us. Hey, homie, good. Hey, dog. Listen, I got a heart surgery tomorrow, but fuck it. I want you to just jump in and do it for him, for the doctor. <laughs> JB, I love you, JB. Smitty, like, JB, I, I got love for you, JB. That is a horrible example. But I, but not really because you are on this try it out tip right now because of the fucking beautiful soul you have. Let's keep it real. You are just the nicest human on this fucking earth. And I believe you are all for, hey, they should be able to try it out. At some point, we have to say, no, we're not just letting you try it out. I'm not letting the heart surgeon just try to cut me open. Oh, hey, no, hey, man. Johnny, Johnny, cut this motherfucker open. Just try it out. We can't just try shit out. Like, hey, girl, can you try to make this fucking skyscraper? Oh, uh, no, nah, I'm a nurse. Oh, well, I need you to be a construction worker today. Why are we trying it out? But you're talking, these examples that you're using are, are over all the professionals that have already proven themselves to try it out. These I, examples I that I you're using, it. these examples that you're using are horrible because you're. Rory, give me heart surgery. Rory ain't got no experience doing this shit. These women, that's what you're doing? No, not. These women are coaching. And hold on, JB, what the hell? Before I, I'm not no, 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 no. I'm just telling you. Are you telling me is she not coaching men right now? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Were they not the number one seed? They're not like these are facts. I don't listen. Listen. Like they're literally talking about professional league. Of men, yes, yes. You're trying. You're saying to for a girl, a woman, to just hop over everybody and do it as a try it out ass shit. Who's the you list? Think that since they're coaching men in a league, professional a, men, professional men, a D league assist, a head coaching job for one year. She is proven that she belongs coaching in the NBA's men's league over one year as her first head coaching job over Mark fucking Jackson? What are we talking why, about? Why is Mark me? Jackson even like, why is he getting, is he, is he, is he, is he an option? Is he an option for the, Mark Jackson has gotten, listen, for whatever reason, he's been blackballed. Let's stop bringing up Mark Jackson. And I love Mark Jackson. Okay. He's been blackballed from the NBA. There's a hundred coaches. He's had nothing to do with Mark Jackson. Well, let's bring up a hundred other coaches let's, then. Let's bring them up then. Like, who's the list that we can bring up? Who's this great, amazing coaching list that, that needs the job? Motherfucker, they got hot. They got fired. A lot of these coaches got fired for one reason or another. I'm not talking about Mark Jackson. I'm talking about other Where's coaches. Where's the coach that just won it all with the Bucks? I, I literally don't know. I literally don't know. Like I, I don't. I don't know, and I don't care. After after a year removed of winning a NBA title, I don't know, and I don't care where he's at. So you but, think she's better deserving over him? I don't. She, JB, all this better Smith, deserving. I have my question, dog. Is she more deserving than him? I don't know who defines JB, deserve. All, no. JB, because, Come listen. on, homie. You got to get out of this gray area shit. It ain't no How do you not know that Bud no, 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 no. is not better If you than let me you. talk, I will answer the question. This deserving shit. What the fuck is deserve? I don't care about fuck about on deserve. I use this example every time. I got an opportunity at Fox Sports and went on national TV in, in within three months. Did I deserve it? I don't give a fuck. I was there and I killed shit. And that's what I did. And now I'm here. I'm hosting with you. And I've interviewed fucking some of the biggest stars that, 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 you, that you've ever heard of. I, I, I've done this shit. Did I deserve it? I don't know. Depends who you're asking. But I got the opportunity and I took full fucking advantage of it. All this earned shit. Stop it. Stop it. Who defines earn, JB? You're equate. It's people out there who probably don't think you earned your fucking job. Do Hold you give on. a fuck what they think? No. Who defines earn? Well, no, equating. hold on. When, when you got not your head coaching job at, at, at Kansas, I'm Monster. sure there were other more experienced coaches that could have got the job Smitty. above you. You, you weren't no. the only option, JB. Stop Smitty. using that Smitty. deserve Smitty. word. That's a cop out. That's a cop Please out. Don't take offense to this. Don't take offense to this. But don't take, I want to not take compare. I want to take offense. Doing social media or on camera. On camera. I'm not social media. I'm talking about my on camera. Coaching, 
to coaching men, Smitty. Don't compare the two. You just told me that I'm comparing a heart surgeon to Roy. It's crazy. It's the same thing. No, because there's a fucking ladder to get to live TV. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? People I jumped over, JB, that have been doing radio for 10 years and, not this and, that, and, and who ain't never got the opportunity. You're missing the point, JB. Yeah, no, you know, you're right. missing the point. All right, man. All right, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna never agree, JB. Coach, man, just say that. I just hate the, the deserve word because when you got coached, when you got your head coaching job, I I put my life on the line. There probably was a hundred other coaches who had more experience than you at that time who could have got the job. So did JB no. jump over everybody, or was JB the only option that Not we had? Really. Come on, bro, Not that don't really. make sense. Anytime a coach is there hired, there's somebody better. Like, what, like there wasn't. Sense. There like, wasn't. Come on, bro. It like, was an 10 program. That I have a resume on rebuilding 0 and 10 programs. So, no, there wasn't anyone more qualified than me to take that job. That's why I built the locker room, the weight room, all the things you saw I did. There wasn't anyone more qualified, just all like right. this scenario. All right. We got a guest on. Um, we're never going to agree on this. I don't get it. It is what it is. I just nah, I just get Fine one thing it. about this show that pissed me off is when is when you do the the earn. I hate that word. You do that with every topic, and that shit is that rubs me the wrong way. That earn word, like who like like define? I don't I don't understand that. Who who the fuck defines who earns some shit? Like who? Do, I mean, like, I think you're being super nearsighted. You telling me you didn't earn getting the opportunity to get the Fox job? Then you're I, delusional. I'm not saying I didn't earn it, but in your in your eye, the way you define what earn is, is. The, the the way you look the way you look at these coaches and, and look at the work that she's putting in you you would you wouldn't define me as earning it. if i was in your homeboy you wouldn't define me as earning it if i was just a regular old Dwayne smith and you heard about my story you would not say i earned it over other people you're just saying because i'm me and you cool like that but like that that ain't you know you i know you enough you you don't believe the work that i put in specifically within tv not my whole life, specifically in TV. Sorry, I, I don't have a broadcasting degree, a journalism degree. I have a business degree. Oh, Whit, I play no. football. Let me be honest. <laughs> Whitlock and Marcellus just found you in the dirt doing nothing and then just said, come on over to Fox. So you didn't do anything prior to that. You didn't earn anything. Whitlock huh? knew me from Ball State from being a, a stand-up guy, a leader, and a good player. And that's you what it was. It. You earned it, homie. <laughs> okay, so hold on. So, so. <laughs> Come on, man. So why can't this Talk woman, this woman's been an assistant in the NBA prior to joining? You act like she just coached one year. You act like she retired last year, became a head coach for the G League one year, and that's it. No, she's been coaching for years and was the number one overall pick and played a decade in the sport. And been, she's been coaching since like 2016. Hey, I think you're, you're getting it confused. I'm, I am confused. You hey, keep I'm confusing confused. women that she played with with men. I, there's a huge fundamental difference. Why are you comparing men and women, homie? Okay. Why do you keep doing this shit? It's fucking asinine. I'm about to throw it's up. Talking about men and women in the same fucking sentence. It doesn't belong. Yes, she was a great woman player. Female, great, unbelievable. She doesn't belong with men, dog. She's Stop comparing the she's two. She's been coaching for years, though, too. There's Personnel no scout, assistant, like... Maybe. It's it's estrogen too. and there's fucking, you know what estrogen is and testosterone? There's a huge fucking difference. Like, I don't know why you don't get that. Like, it just blows my mind. Matt, welcome in. What's Five, up, Matt? Six Zero Academy. Uh, I'm going to be the first person to throw up live on the show. What's good? What's good? Uh, I hate for Smitty can't yell. So we, we're trying yeah, to get guys, studio, man. We're trying to get studio. We're trying to get studio ASAP, Rocky. So. We could just like fight and just fucking. I could suplex them. Um, you could come in once a week, go head up one on one. Like it, it, guys, it's to do that. What are you guys fighting about? We're trying to do that. Um, a woman's getting an this. interview, an interview to be the head coach uh, for NBA team. Just an interview, and everybody's it's spazzing not out. It's so mind. lightly, Smitty. There's five of these humans on Earth that get these interviews. It's a professional man sport. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Why, why are you acting like it? So if Matt's been coaching 20 years in the men's league and then you just come out and throw it out there like, it's just an interview. Well, Matt didn't get the motherfucker. 
It depends. I need I need to look at Matt. I need so why? I need to look at Matt. Like his context matters. Like yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Context matters. Context matters. Context matters. Like it's not that fucking easy. Matt Matt cover 20 years, he's been head coach. Like, no, it ain't that fucking simple. Let's just, just move forward. Let's move forward. I don't feel like I don't feel like doing that. Yeah, the ladies love Smitty. I tell you that. It ain't that. It ain't that. We just we just see things differently. That's all it is, man. We see things oh, differently. I, I know that. It's okay. I don't have no problem with it. I don't uh, have no problem with it either. Hey Matt. I, no. So listen, we didn't get you yesterday. There's this guy that's basically dedicated a channel to me um, on YouTube. Uses my videos on YouTube. I thought it was a, a, a. I thought you got a copyright for it because I got a copyright before showing uh, my Theo Von interview, even though I had to ask him and then he released it. But this guy's just taking my videos and your videos and posting them on his own channel, and then he calls you a dummy. Um, and then he calls me, I'm just everything. So yesterday I gave him a little clout and I just basically told his dumb ass he's an idiot. But anyway, it, he's defending Prime in Colorado. He has no clue who Prime is. He's never met him. He doesn't know him. Uh, you're a dummy. I've, I've come to the conclusion he's Ryan Clark. He's just a race baiter. You're a dummy because you're a white boy that he doesn't know. I'm a white boy that he doesn't know. Smitty can't do wrong. He loves Smitty. He wants Smitty to get off the show. Um he wants me to get off this show and go go to his show. So basically, he's an idiot. I said, so you don't. So you realize that Matt's an alum. He played in the NFL from that alum, and he interviewed Prime for two hours two weeks ago. You fucking idiot! But apparently, just because, and I I don't get the hate for you, Matt. I get it for me because I go against the grain and I try to tell my opinionated take on Prime in Colorado. We argue about it. 99% of the time, you're defending your alumni and university, but you still come on and say, you know what? It's making it hard to defend certain things. You've had, we've had these conversations. I don't know how it makes you a dummy from this fucking nobody, but apparently I thought you would be, like, worshipped on the Colorado side of things. This guy thinks you're a dummy with me. So I uh, clap it up for being a dummy with me. Um, so let's just dive right into it and start fighting, I guess, so we, this guy can do another video on us. He's done five on me in the last two days on his own channel. Uh, <laughs> I want to dive into some Colorado news uh, because I've had my takes. You might have seen them. Um, I want to dive into a few of these things that have happened over the last few weeks. Uh, we saw we didn't get to have you on. You've been running around. Uh, Warren Sapp was hired as a GA. We, we discussed it previous a little bit um we had that discussion now he's shown you know he's on the field getting guys going we also i wanted to discuss a, a late hit out of bounds in a play that to the that was blown dead by uh shiloh he hit a guy out of bounds or late um and then we had a guy catch a one-handed ball throw the ball at the guy and then started a little fight and then Dion now since has addressed a unruly classroom behavior um, deal and then a bad locker room trash left everywhere deal. I always say shit stacks up. It starts to get bad. Now to Smitty's point, this happens at every program. I've dealt with this forever. I want to ask you a straight up question. Um, can you build a culture because this happens everywhere, by the way. My biggest thing to you and my my concern as a coach is don't film it, Matt. Don't put it out there. Bust that ass, but keep it off the news line because the target's just getting bigger is my whole thing. And if you're willing to take the target, cool. It's cool. But I just see that babies, I call them babies because they're kids that we coach, are being set up for failure in the long run if they don't win. And that's just my biggest thing because I don't want to see any kid have this target on their chest unnecessarily. I just want to ask you, would you would you show everything you film, number one, to on social media? And number two, uh -oh. everyone in the chat talks shit about me because we talk about Prime so much on this show. Well, I don't talk about Nevada because they don't fucking film everything. I don't see it. So there's a reason why journalists and media show what they show. It's because it's the most available. So mm. I guess that's my point. I want to ask you, would you film everything and put it out there? And then my second question to you is, um, where are you at with the happenings that's going on right now? Uh, do you see 
a lateral program being built versus a vertical <laughs> one, as Sean King kind of stated. Um, this is a JUCO uh, plan that Dion's taken, in my opinion. It's a it's a JUCO role. Uh, I used to I used to build lateral two because it was a two year institution, Matt. This is a four year institution. I don't know if you can live without high school kids, but go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'll try and unpack as much of that as I can. I'm um, sorry, I just tried to catch up with you for the last few days. Um. All right. Yes, I would film everything. I film everything at my facility. I, you can't just film the good shit. So if you're going to film everything, film everything. Um, they're not babies or children. Like they're, they're men, but they sure, there's a lot of men in this generation that act like kids and they, they say, I'm a man, but they sure do love being treated like children when, it helps them. Now, that's not just at CU. That's everywhere. Um, everybody deals with dirty locker rooms and disrespectful kids in class. I mean, that's not a CU problem. That's a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old asshole problem. Um, you know, like, look, I don't, I don't, if people want to take my stuff off the offline and post it and try and roast, that's they're taking my shit and roasting. So, like, let's be Thank real. <laughs> like, you hate mother, hate away, motherfucker. You're the one, like, Chicago backhanding to my content. You fucking weirdo. Um, I I've tried to do nothing but support Coach Prime, and you know we've got a huge group of Colorado kids going there on Saturday of this week. Oh. Uh, you know, to to do a recruiting trip and do like our own personal little six zero junior day. Uh, so that's good. Take a big group up there and get them in front of the coaches. Uh, I had a very interesting uh, question on my show on zero to 60, which will be on at 10 a.m. today <clears throat> last week about, you know, does coach prime recruit Colorado? And my response was, it's not coaches. It's not coach prime's job to recruit Colorado. It's co it's, it's Colorado kids job to show coach prime. They can play there. Because he's recruiting four and five star kids now. Now Colorado can recruit the country, so they're going to. They don't have to just recruit the frat boy down the street from whatever high school. So, <clears throat> look, man, the the whole concept that they're building a lateral program. I don't really know what that means, but I'll tell you one thing: they've been in football purgatory for twenty years, bro. We haven't won a fucking bowl game since I was a senior, and I'm forty two years old. So. Like, I don't give a shit where we're going as long as it's not down. And we're damn sure not going that way. If anything, we're going, we're, we just keep ascending. So, yes, I would film everything. Yes, I would put everything out there. Yes, yeah. the more eyes, the better. You know, free, all advertising, all negative advertising, all of it is good advertising. It's all, it's all, your name is being spoken. So, you're never going to appease to all these half half minded twits out here who've got a problem with everything. I, I've stopped trying to appease to them. I've stopped giving a shit. Um, you know, I look, man. If, if Colorado wins, which I think they make a bowl game next year, easy. Uh, they are much improved in the offensive and defensive lines. Way more physical. Uh, you know, if they can figure out a way to be ranked all year and have, you know, multiple guys go in the top 10, top 15 of the draft, which I think Travis Hunter is a lock for a top 10 pick. Shador is, Shador could be the first pick or should Shador could be like a third rounder if he has a shitty year. And I just don't see how he has a yeah. shitty year. I just don't. So I, uh, I think that the, the sky is truly the limit here and you're going to have two first round draft picks and probably a, you know, the, a, a freshman All-American first team unanimous in Jordan Seaton, who honestly, that kid is about as real as it gets. So, you know, I thought that you, I always think this, but I always thought that, you know, like young guys would need to come in and cut their teeth, right? It didn't happen with this kid, man. He came in and started cutting up everybody else. So he's real. And I, I think that CU's got a real opportunity to just make everybody eat crow. So there's a lot of things that, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that all the haters can dine on on a daily basis, but eventually, eventually, you know, everybody's going to have to just start eating shit when the games start. 
Smitty. I mean, you said that beautifully. I mean, you know what side I stand on. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. I mean, I for me, you know, it's one thing to have an opinion on, it, you know, should they be filming everything? Like, oh, that's just subjective. But for me, I haven't seen anything that's going to either A, scare me away to thinking they're going to they're gonna have a bad season or even excite me to think they're going to have a great season. It's just like, this is just what they do. It's, just, this it's, is, no, it's normal stuff. They're just filming it. Exactly. And that's what I always say. I'm like, JB, you know how many times, like, I, I remember conversations where head coach during the offseason came to us, team meeting, whatever, or even in, in, shoot, before a lift. And, and the team had to run because the locker room was dirty or left messy. Like, that thing, those are things that happens in every single school around the country. I just think that because we're seeing it, it's like, it's just made, it's blown out of proportion, I guess, for some people. For me, it's nothing. And JB, like, like I told you yesterday, I was like, like JB, you've seen this thousands of times. I'm sure you've probably yelled at your guys at, at some point about wow. leaving the locker room messy. You know how me, many fucking rolls they had to do or fucking hills or crumps. Yeah. What was your punishment of choice, coach? Mine is always either bear crawls, rolling, or sleds. What's yours? I only had two rules. <clears throat> if you're late, you have certain thing. If you're missed, you have certain thing. And if you do anything unruly, you have a certain thing. So we had yeah, 10 to 20s under time. Yeah. 10 to 20s under time. Damn. Gross. Yeah, the whole team if the locker room was fucked. Disgusting. Um, Here's the thing. That's not the discussion or argument. I have no issue. We know every team has this issue. My issue I have is that we're putting a target continually to do so. This isn't Akron, bro. This this is Deion Sanders, one of the greatest players ever as the head coach of this organization, this Colo yeah. University of Colorado in Boulder, the Buffaloes. Not Prime <laughs> University, not fucking this or that. It is Colorado. I am trying to still figure out when or if, let's just say if. I hope it, I hope it happens. I hope you have, they have a good year for Matt's sake, for my boy Darren Hagan, for all the great people I've known at Colorado forever. Yeah. But if it doesn't, what happens it's i told you so by all the fucking naysayers they're waiting for colorado to fail you know this what happens when they win though I, I just hate to see it for the simple fact that they're waiting well, to see them fail you hate you hate to you hate to see the assumption that they might lose all we've been doing yeah. is losing bro who cares like no i get I mean, that put, put your that. balls out there let's go i love this i i love yeah, the fact I that he it. wants to target on them but the lateral, the, the reason I say all the things that we're seeing from checking diamonds on the jewelry, they got their shit snatched last year. Smitty's case, well, Smitty, Smitty's side of this is, well, where are the people that are doing it? Well, we had that discussion yesterday. Um, and I said the other day, so if, I didn't say when, I said if, I hope it don't happen, if they get their shit snatched, who's going to cry this year about it? Because at some point, you got to have some type of humility. Matt, you and I have talked about this. At some point, you have to have some sort of humility because this game will eat you and spit you out. I just don't see it. I, I, I see, like, more and more shit spiraling out of control because of the filming, to your take. We're filming it. Cool. But at some point, dog, like, how about we just say, fuck it, let's check these cats in internally and let's get this program to where we win. Then we film it because you haven't won yet. Like, I want to see you win and do it, Dion. I want to see that. I You haven't won yet, which is only putting a target on, on, on the players, dog. It don't matter about – it don't matter about fucking Dion. Dion's will be fine forever. If I'm, so, I'm, I'm just confused. Like, what, what are we – what's the problem? Because they filmed everybody wearing jewelry? No. I Listen, J, JB and Craig Farron – the way I understand it, J, JB, obviously, we know his background. We know where he's from. You're taught not to flaunt and advertise when you got jury well, and stuff like that because of what it could lead to. He doesn't think like that, dog. They they don't. And social right. media, everybody flaunts everything. And they're in Boulder. Ain't nobody going to rob them in Boulder. They got robbed last year, homie. In, at UCLA. Not well, even motherfucking they Boulder. Played the games at Boulder? <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying, like, it. It, it seems to me that it's just regardless of what they do or how they do it, it's just constant fucking hate. Well, that's my point. Pour it, pour it the fuck on. Like, that's oh, my God, they got a Cybertruck. Hate. 
Oh my God, they have jewelry. Hate like it's the only fucking program. It's not. Hate. Yeah, I told him yesterday. I said, why are we blaming the person with the jury and not mad at people who who actually robbed them? It's like it's like it's like we're blaming the kids. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like, we're, we're, it's a hypothetical problem. It, it's, it's right. It, it might not even happen. Right, right, right. Okay. Like what, what, what? I just don't understand. Like, what do you what do you want me to say? Like, fuck you. Take your jewelry off. How dare you? I don't. I. This is. I don't I, give a flying fuck. I think it's ridiculous. Like I, I know, and that's I why it, I do. See, as I a just coach, hope that I think it's ridiculous. As a coach, I would never put my kids in harm's way like that. Well, the co- the coach is iced out more than the players. I mean, what are we talking about? And he was that way before social media. You know that. I know Ooh. that. He came from the mud. He was a guy to tell NFL franchises to fuck off. I don't want to go there. He did that and earned it. His kids have not told me. His oh, kids are in the lap of luxury. They're in the process of doing it, coach. Right. <laughs> so what do you just want them to all fucking act broke when they don't have to be anymore? Yeah, so, broke. So I just for, a hundred, broke. for a hundred years, college football players had to just be servants, essentially, and get a fucking stipend check. And now they have the ability to, to shine and, and live the life that they want to live, and they have money to do it. And we're mad at him for doing it now. I mean, let's let's pick one dog. It's it's either it's either what why why does everybody have to look broke if they're not? Why? Just I never said look broke. We know they're not broke. We know they're not broke. We they don't have to look yeah. broke, but when you don't look hungry is the problem I have because we're Matt, yeah. you and I know, and that both of you know pretty hungry to me. Even Smitty's young ass knows the NFL has we're transcending towards a Bad product. We've been talking about it on this show, your show, everyone's show. So when are we going to say this game eats us up and spits us out? Like, when are we just going to walk we into the about that all the time. So you think these guys are going to walk no, into the I think that I think that your shelf life in this game is so fucking short that you know what? You better fucking live it up while you're in it. What, what, what are we talking about here? Man? Go live your life and have some fun. I, I like, agree to all that. I agree to Travis all that. Travis Hunter looks like he's busting his ass to me. The, the team looks like they're really working hard to me. I mean, it, this is part of, like, isn't the whole point to get paid all this fucking money and have all this luxury because it's so fucking hard? Like, it's so fucking hard, so that's why guys live it up like this? It's not just a, it, it isn't just a, oh my God, he has a bigger chain, so I'm going to go buy a bigger chain. Mm. Like, there are, there are a whole lot of guys also that don't give a fuck about any of this shit. This is just an isolated maybe... 10% of the team. There's a bunch of guys who don't even care who are who are who are just busting their ass too. So again, like it, it just just because somebody's got a fucking kick ass watch or a car or that's I mean, I know Schmitty hates this, but that shit is earned to a point too. This is no one just they're not just giving everybody NIL deals like that. There's a bunch of kids who don't have shit. That's my point though. It's like I, I don't I see a bunch of entitled kids who are demanding 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 where are the demands they haven't done anything yet matt they haven't well, done where anything. Are the demands also give me an example of of shador demanding something <laughs> or travis hunter demanding something shut tell me well shador demanded a coach be fired well, <laughs> that's that's you mean? hearsay and the coach went and got a head job at san diego state so Again, where that's that again, that's hearsay. That's not, I won't dive into that, but, that's true. Hearsay. but I'm just saying, well, okay, if you're gonna say it's fucking, I didn't bring that up, you did. If it's a fact, then it's if that's a fact. Well, then what I'm saying is, so, his answer is that coach fucking a head coach of San Diego State now. Well, there's more than just him. Well, <laughs> well, all those other coaches that left all got other jobs by that one person. <laughs> well. well I, I don't agree with you on this either. I think it's ridiculous. And this is a huge, like, it's just a very broad statement now saying that Shador Sanders gets coaches fired. I mean, what I'm saying is this, Matt, as a coach and as a former player. I'm not going to agree with you just because, like, it, it's just. Uh, as, a, as a leader, I want to just ask you a question. Shador Sanders in the huddle with other grown football coaches, his dad being one of them. For instance, after the Colorado State game, why is he? That is entitlement. That is enabled. I don't what, want my what's players. What's entitled about that? I don't want my. So you want your players to be in a grown man conversation when you shake the other head coach's hands in a fiery rival game and there's beef being spoke. Your son and your quarterback 
whether it's your son or not, just let's say quarterback as the coach, you think it's okay for him to be in those primitive inf- conversations? What are you talking about? I just said it. This kid hey, is entitled. You need, be, you need to. Why is Shador? What exactly are you? He CS2 said post game against Colorado State last year after the game was over when Coach you mean Brown was going to shake they, hands with um, what the call it? Field was getting rushed. You mean yeah, then? He, he said he said Shador was right next to him. What? Like why was he? Yeah, he was right next to him, and so was the entire stadium. They were rushing the field. No, they weren't. Yeah, they the rushed field. the field, dog. I was on the field. Go, yeah, they did. Go watch what I'm talking about. I'm not talking. I'm talking so, about this. This has happened. It wasn't just one time, Matt. I'm not just talking so about Shador that. Shador being on the field behind his father when his father is shaking Norvell's hand after Norvell came out and disrespected Coach Prime and his family, that's a problem? It, we're not going to agree. It's okay. You're right. We're not going to fucking agree. You got to do, you gotta do you got to defend Colorado. It's you okay. Have to defend you shit. I constantly go the other fucking route too. So I know just, that's what I'm about. Now you're gonna point over know. here and say I'm a homo. Hold on. Dude. I'm not saying either the motherfuckers know. online who got a problem or you I have a problem. Just, it's just, a no-win situation here, Matt. I just started the conversation by saying you go the other way. I just started the show off. I know you go the other way. What I'm saying is. You ha- you should defend your alma mater because you're gonna be there fucking way after Dion leaves. My point is, I'm trying to figure out when these kids have been all inclusive to all these different scenarios that grown men used to handle as grown men. We now have entitled these kids to think they are grown men. There is no hierarchy in Colorado showing it more than anybody. Oh, That's my point. Ever, dude. That is such bullshit. You want these kids to be leaders, but they're they can't be grown men. So, like, so what when he gets if he's 23, when or how old is Shador? 22, 21? Oh I have no so idea. Next year, when he gets drafted into the NFL, is he still a little kid and can't be a leader anymore? If he steps up and he, if he steps to a coach and gives that coach attitude, is he a child or is he a leader? The 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 circumstance with the the fucking the jersey number or where you play doesn't make you a leader or not. Who you are makes you a leader. Your age doesn't make you a leader or not. Your character and your standing mm. makes you a fucking leader. Period. Mm. Just because you've been somewhere longer doesn't mean you're a leader. That doesn't mean shit. The age doesn't mean shit. Your character, your standing, how what you stand for, that's what makes you a leader. Come on, man. Not not your age or just because he's in college or like, come on. Look, let's be real. Stetson Bennett, I'm pretty sure Stetson Bennett and like Lamar Jackson were in the same draft class. Yeah. Or the same like high school class. Yeah. And Lamar exactly. Jackson fucking is two, like ten, an MVP before, and Stetson Bennett was winning a national title, and they're like the same age. So like, what are we talking about from an age perspective? Lamar's younger than everybody on his team, and he's got a captain on his chest. Is that just because he got drafted high? No, it's because he's a fucking leader, and that's just a circumstance. Mahomes is younger than everybody else. Like, at some point, it's just leader. It doesn't have a, anything to do with age. We, yeah, we're never going to agree on it. It's fine. That's good. That's for the, I like it. I like it that way. I just want to see that. I just hope that. For the young man's sake, that they go to the NFL, they have success. I haven't seen uh, it happen with this sort of uh, entitlement, but we'll see. Hopefully, it happens for him. Hopefully, Shador is the guy that changes it all. You haven't seen anybody. So I, I, I love the sarcasm. JB kills cool me with that cool voice. It kills. You me. haven't I'm seen not people. Being I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I, just, I think that's it's like one of the most ridiculous comments I think I've ever seen. There's a lot of other like ex NFL sons that have played in the NFL. Like I, it, Shador, Shador, and Dion aren't the first guys to have swag and like they're not. I didn't say they were advantage. I didn't well, say it. So why why do you think Shador is Travis? Travis Hunter might as well be part of that family too. Is he, he is. Set up familiar as well? He is. You he think is, Travis Hunter is set up for failure? He is part of the failure. Yeah, the, yeah I understand. The family, the That's family. what I said. Do he's you part think of he's set up for failure like the rest of the Sanders, in your opinion? Yeah. The, the other the other sons in the league, though, we didn't get to see this much. That's the difference. We yeah. didn't see him as much. You agree? Okay, to that. well, they didn't have they didn't have the avenue to be seen as much either. 
So, okay, so they're so so Dion and Shador and everybody are trendsetting. That's usually a good thing when you look back on it. My question to you is very simple. Is Shiloh and Shador being set up for quote unquote failure because of their entitlement and everything else that, that you say they're receiving? And Travis Hunter is part of the family, essentially, which we both agree on. And Schmitty, you would agree with that too, correct? Yes. Is, is Travis Hunter also being set up for failure by Coach by Coach Prime and the way that Coach Prime does things and his whole system and everybody else there? Is he also being set up for failure? That's to be determined. Different position, different deal. What you don't see it by him, though. You I will play DB. So why? Wh- well, what you see with what you see with Shador though, when he goes into the crowd and before the game and he talks that talk, you got to be able to walk the walk. We've seen him stand on business, as you say, Smitty. So he didn't walk. He didn't walk. Oh, no, I'm, I'm I'm just finishing. He got cut up and he stayed in the game. I love to see that as a quarterback. I know Matt's disgusted with Dion. I love all those things. So it, it shows some nuts and guts. I have no issue. I, the issue I have is when you walk the walk. And then you cry and play victim when someone barks back. Don't who, who don't cry? Start none. Won't when be did none, huh? when, no, I guess my when did it happen? must be different than y'all. Because when but when did it happen? Where I'm from, you better be able to take it. And when they did it happen? Very well, Matt. I'm just gonna keep it funky with you. Your guys over there cannot handle it very well when it's people talk back. Shit, dog. You're not. That's just talking. You give me some. Give me some fucking. Some examples. Oh, okay, so so prior prior to the Colorado State game, when the white boy banged Hunter out of bounds because they were talking all that shit pregame, uh-huh. there's no issue, right? No repercussion. You wouldn't have told your staff and team that we're going all out on these Colorado motherfuckers, right? Is that what you're telling me? No, you're not, because you would have did the same thing as I would have did. So Hold on, time out, you, Number one. Yes. Number two. Well, you, just just go to you, you guys go to Oregon. You go to Oregon. Shador is in the crowd talking that shit before. You get fucking blown out. And then all of a sudden, we're a victim. You go to fucking every other game that this motherfucker talks shit before the game. And you think that's humility and it's setting him up for a success. I don't want humility. And it's amazing to me that you want that cool it. Shit. It's amazing to me that you don't like, like it. Drum, homie, bad, you, bad, 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 you go bad. like this, homie. You go like this. You fucking one day you're this, the other day you're this. But that's what the fuck I'm doing. Let's keep emotion out of it. Let's keep emotions out of it. That's what I do. I let's keep, let's keep emotions out of it. Do, huh? Keep emotion out yeah. of it. Yeah. All right, motherfucker. All right. Look. You know? look this, well, no, I don't actually. You just told me I don't do that. And now you tell me I do. So I look, said you I'm don't. Not sit here and get shit on. For fucking having an opinion while you hey, sit here. Bullshit. You two motherfuckers just got selected, Mary, homie. Real what? shit. You both have selective hearing. I'll take it that I have selective hearing too, but let's I keep it real. You now? got selective hearing. Right. Come on, you know homie. Fuck you and fuck you. Well, and fuck, fuck you, motherfucking ass. bitch ass. ass. Hang, Hang up, ass. homie. Oh, well, fuck ass. you. I ain't, I ain't said nothing the whole time. <laughs> fuck you too, what man. I'm sitting there listening. Fuck shit, homie. Fuck you hey, you, you want to say gonna bitch name? I'm just going to throw that bitch name out there some more, homie. I ain't the one to call bitch, homie. I ain't the one to call bitch, homie. Call that okay, bitch all you want. Fucking, Say bitch all you want, motherfucker. That's what it is. Anyway, um, Steve Kim, come on in. Moving on amicably. Steve Kim in the building. I see him in the middle, man. Steve, how your day going, Steve? Too sick wow. over the, the, their, their attachment. You got to be honest, dog. Like, I don't get it. Let, let's bring you down a little bit, Steve. Let me see. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. How you doing, Steve? Uh, that's hey, what's Steve, going can on, you though. lower your can you lower, lower the little your camera or, or higher your thing? There we go. There we go. But what's up, fellas? Not much. I'm sitting there chilling, listening to a great dialogue out of nowhere. I I I, I get a fuck you too. I said I didn't say I ain't even said a word in 15 Matt, minutes, but Matt, I guess Matt, it's, I guess it's Matt fuck me, it's fuck you then. <laughs> Matt can't argue without being emotional. I don't get it. Uh I love Matt, but he just can't do it. Um uh, I got hey, I gotta ask you, hey, Brass Tax Steve, Adrian Broner just announced his fight. How you feeling about it? Great. Now all he needs is a hot tub time machine. Um 
I, I guess he what is he, oh yeah he's fighting Blair the Flair Cobb. I look he's way is he good up. like I've never heard of Blair the Flair. Like, he's not bad. He's with Golden Boy. He's a oh. he's a decent professional fighter. Would I call him world class or a legitimate contender at this moment? No, he's not. He's taking some losses. Got knocked out by Alexis Rocha at the Galen Center at USC. Mm -hmm. I was there about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I don't know where Broner goes right now. It's, it's hard to kind of like take this career seriously because there's no real traction he hasn't really been relevant for about six seven years <laughs> but you know maybe he can you know rack up some wins and get one last payday but i mean good for adrian make that money he's a, he's a character i've always kind of enjoyed him he's always kind of amused me yeah. but as of right now what i say that adrian broner is truly a player in that welterweight division he probably is not Gotcha. Steve, I gotta ask you, basketball encyclopedia that you are, I gotta ask you straight out the gate: Is UConn the best back-to-back -back national champs ever? No, no. I mean, I, I think the, like, as you say, the game is watered down, but I think it's an impressive, impressive team. Though I actually watched the semifinal game with you. I watched last night's final. Uh, that team with Klingon, uh, Klingon, <laughs> uh, Castle, you know, Fig Newton. What an impressive team uh, Dan Hurley has put together. And uh, they share the ball. They make the right pass. They make the extra pass. They never make the bad pass. Their ability to share the ball and play for one another. And I, I read a story about Dan Hurley. I forgot uh, which writer from Fox Sports. Now, this was a very interesting. I didn't know that Dan Hurley uh, played this very rigid defensive style. And then he figured out like, you look, I got to open up my offense. I got to be more analytic based in a sense that I got to play a more free flowing game and I can't make everything into a bar fight. And it's okay not to just win games 54, 52. He wants to win games now 88 to 75, blow teams out, be free flowing and spacing and cutting. And it's impressive the way they wear teams down athletically in the half court. And if you look at what they've done in terms of the numbers, in terms of the dominance, I actually think they are one of the more dominant, best back-to-back -back champions ever. I mean, they win every game by at least a dozen points. Last night against Purdue, they did not play particularly well in terms of shooting the ball uh, as well as they usually do. And, and you still got the sense that they're going to win that game from the time they took a six, seven point lead. And what really impressed me at the end was, with about eight minutes to go in the game, I said, this is a game that Purdue cannot win, but UConn can give it away. That was the only way they were going to have that upset occur. I saw UConn take one ill-advised shot in the last eight minutes. I said, that is a well-coached team with high basketball IQ. And if I'm Danny Hurley, I don't care who offers me a job. I have a dynasty. I'm already at the best program in the country. Don't go anywhere. You're at your job. You don't need to be at a blue blood. You are now at a new blood. UConn, mm. the past 25 years, they have firmly established themselves as the best, most accomplished basketball program in the country. Not even close. So you're not chasing that Kentucky? No. Look, Dan Hurley is happy in UConn. Is making more money going to make him happy? And Kentucky comes with a very interesting set of pressures where you have a bad possession and that fan base can be very difficult to deal with. But UConn is a school that plays in a basketball conference that cares about it. The program is based in basketball. Hurley seems like a Northeast guy coming from Jersey City. I, I don't see why there's a different situation. Is a couple extra million dollars really going to make his particular life better? I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, I got to ask you, uh, I want to dive into a little political question and what's your take on this? We've had LeBron James come out in the last couple of weeks talking about a squatter living next to his house. He's had to spend money on security. And then we see mm. some folks that we really have yet to see do this, but... Stephen A. came out on his show with Charles Barkley the streets. and said this. You see the streets in New Dude, York. Three weeks ago on TV, they had these 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 uh, migrants. First of all, the border is a joke. The border is a joke. Oh. But they had these migrants, they call them, had just bust up in New York. They got them on camera kicking and beating like cops. They beat up these two cops. Yeah. Beating up two cops. But, beating up two police officers but they were, in the subway Stephen station. A., they were out of jail in 24 hours. 
And the next day, actually, actually, it was the same day, Charles. But uh, yeah, the but the, but two days later, they called him called him Robin Macy's. I like wow. First of all, they beat up cops. How are you out of jail in twenty four hours? And then clearly, two days later, they're robbing Macy's. Anybody, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or dog, or cat, or puppy, you know that's wrong. Period. Well, so, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. The same political candidates and the party that they endorse, all of this is being caused by their governance. That's it, guys. You, they're, they're trying to skirt around the issue. And now that the elite who lives in gated communities on their ivory towers are now complaining because it's close to them. But at the end, they always have a caveat. Well, we're still not voting for this certain guy. Okay, then keep endorsing the guy who has pushed this type of legislation for years. I think it's hilarious that that people like Steph Curry don't want Section 8 housing near them. Right. Well, here's the thing. You are so liberal. A lot of this is something that you want for everybody else but you. Mm. And as for LeBron, you continually push politicians who want this, who strive for it. They defend this behavior until it's your next door neighbor. So unless they have the actual guts to say, this is who I'm voting for, I'll give The Rock credit. The Rock has actually said, and, and here's the problem. Now he's getting heat. Now the question is, is he going to back down from it? But again, this is what you endorsed, and this is what you get. Yeah. I, I, don't, try, I don't trust none of these dudes, Steve. I'm going to be real with you. I don't know who to vote for. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, there's only one. I know there's one guy not to vote for. Yeah, I know. One other choice. Yeah, but I mean, but damn, like, 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 but, but think about that though. Like, think about what you just said. So it's like we know we're not voting for one person, so we just got to vote for the other person. Like, damn, like that's 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 a bad position to be in. I think America was clearly better under the other guy, Donald J. Trump, and I, I, I think it's really almost ethically and intellectually dishonest to just say. Well, you're racist. Mm. And my, my view was, well, then you're a race baiter. So I don't, I'm not afraid of being called racist. The number one, I know it's not true. And number right. two, it's probably projecting. And number three, I'll look at the results. Well, America was in no wars, did not have the same set of issues four or five years ago as they do now. Uh, when I fill up my uh, car, it's a lot more expensive now. When you go grocery shopping, it's a lot more expensive now. My money wasn't going to Ukraine. OK, um, you look at the borders. One guy wanted to build a wall, didn't get it done. The other guy is literally placing hordes of illegals. And I said illegals because that's what they are into our country and disrupting the infrastructure and now impacting everyday citizens. If you do not like what I say, I don't know what else to tell you, except I'm being more honest than most of you people could ever be. Why do you think people? And again, I'm really just asking because I'm not in the politics and I need to be more into it because I I'm, I just need to. Why, in your honest opinion, why do you think there's so much, um, I guess, hate towards Trump though? In your from your view, like just being the honest. same Trump that used to get NAACP lifetime awards, that used to hang out and was high fived and dapped up by Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, uh, the same guy that actually made great great. Uh, I would say contributions to the HBCU. Mm -hmm. um, this the the same voting block that hates him now. They used to love him. They were basically shepherded and heard to not to like him because he came out as a Republican. That's why it's a weak mental mindset. So and you don't think you don't think it's nothing he's like actually said though. You you think it's just because he's a Republican? Like that's it? I, if you want to compare past quotes, we could drudge up. Joe right, Biden, right, where he said, right. I don't want these kids in a jungle. Yeah. Well, really? Are you that's why I said, I don't know who to, I don't trust neither one of them. <laughs> that's why, that's why hey. these wranglers like Jamel Hill and Gail King, Gail King is probably going to whip Charles. <laughs> I'm just telling you, mentally, she's going to get on his butt for saying that. Yeah, she got a Snoop Dogg. Hey, just, re I'm, a, I got a buddy who's a, uh, is a, uh, what do you call that, uh, when you when you're on the boat for most of the, a marine a merchant marine, and he's in Alaska, and he he sent me a couple things, but 
Do you know the prices of groceries in Alaska right now? Yeah. Look, there there are um I, I've seen the stuff on social media, and there is a large gap between what things used to cost and what they cost now. Um but Smitty, back to your point, it is really interesting when the when the city of Chicago, and I've seen a lot of videos, Nate the Lawyer, very good channel. I follow him, Pink Book Lessons, another mm -hmm. channel that I really follow. A lot of these cities, are these pockets in America are really like a microcosm of, of the United States. They vote based on racial preference, okay? It is racial identity politics, and they do like their own version of di diversity, equity, and all this other stuff. Three years later, they complain. They complain about the governance that they voted for because why did they vote for a certain individual? We're the same race. I thought it was really interesting when Lori Lightfoot was running Chicago. She might have been the worst mayor that Chicago's ever had, and they've had some bad ones. Mm. But they always vote a certain direction. And now, and this is the funny thing, so they recalled her. And I said, wow, this, this could be a sea change. They hired someone worse than her. Mayor Mohawk, Brandon Johnson, shout out to Jericho Green. He came up with that. Mm. Now, I've always said this. Brandon Johnson is the most honest politician ever. I actually have no problems with Brandon Johnson because I don't live in Chicago. It doesn't really impact me. Brandon Johnson told you what he was going to do. He was going to put the needs of other people above you, the same people that voted for me. Again, you get the governance you deserve. That's real. That's hey, real. Um, yeah. It's, it's, JB, it's, me and you got to start paying attention to positives a little bit more, JB, so we can know what's going on. No, nah, look, Smitty, make it easy on yourself. Just vote Republican and conservative. Uh, that, that, that's what I do. Just keep it simple. Uh, if See, it's an R, if it's an R, and if it's, if, especially if an older white guy, go, okay, let's go back to older white guys. They were pretty good for a while. They're, they get a lot of heat, older white guy and a Republican. Yeah, I, that's what I do. My buddy, uh, there's a guy that I know in, but, I'm gonna, I don't want to out him. I don't want all you maniacs out there whining nice. and crying. There's a guy that I've known in boxing for years. He's from Philadelphia, and he is black. And about three years ago, <laughs> he he retweeted something about some crime spree. He had one of the funniest tweets ever. And I had to call him, and he said, Steve, he just he, and he retweeted with the comment. All right, time to get the old white guys in charge. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's what it is. But, I mean, you know. All I'm saying is this, this um, these highly you... liberal uh, mayors of certain cities that wanted to defund the police, how's that working out? Mm. And then you have Tiffany Henyard, the super city girl mayor, Dalton, Illinois. Look up that story. That is fascinating what's going on there. Who is it? Tiffany. Who? Tiffany Henyard, super city girl mayor. I want you to see this Alaska prices real quick. All right, so let's go shopping in Dillingham, Alaska. All right, Whoa. if you get some donuts, they're only $8. You can get a PB&J, and um, right you're going to go ahead and start out with some ten fifty nine dollar bread. And you got some peanut butter for $14.89. So uh, if you're bone on a budget, you can always do that. Ketchup is a good eighteen seventy nine. If you like beans or canned goods, they're just only eight oh three. Are they at the airport, JB? So, um, what the hell? Oh, grocery store in Alaska. Great. You got forty seven dollars for some steak, and if you want to do steak and potatoes, let's go ahead and get some twenty six dollar potatoes. Yep, twenty six dollars for potatoes. Um, That's hit, crazy. So my brother, my brother's in the Air Force Station. There, he's been there. Uh, in Fairbanks for, yeah, he was there 20 years. He's in the Air Force. He was a fighter pilot. He tells me some crazy shit. He said there's a design. This is, he's retired now in pharmaceuticals, but he's still attached to the Air Force. He said there's a design to, the, the quickest way into this country from Russia is where? Alaska, bro. Alaska. I mean, it almost touches. Why wouldn't you want to get people out of that state if you're going to invade this country? Now, I'm just throwing that out there, but that sounds crazy, don't it? Well, like, why would you, how would you get an $18 ketchup bottle? <laughs> um, I get, look, this administration has been very interesting. I don't even think Joe Biden really runs it, but look, we, we can do things in different ways. 
but the definition of insanity is to do things over and over again knowing that they don't work or that they're ineffective people don't have to like donald j trump i, I get it but you can't tell me um like there's this actor this older black woman jennifer lewis he's Hitler, and he's and i'm just like lady you're not a grizzly bear. Speak like a normal human being. That's her voice, Steve. Stop. Yeah, Don't you do know. that. That's a legend right oh, there, Jennifer no. Lewis. <laughs> Don't do Jennifer Lewis like that. I can't, I mean, I can't let you do that on the show. I mean, I'm just like. She's the auntie on every movie. Yeah, the crazy one. And she actually said, I know the face of insanity. I go, yeah, you must look in the mirror. It's like they're performers. Jesus Christ. Steve, huh? yeah. Cisco, Cisco's a comedian. He runs comedian. You got to get Steve on. Uh, Steve, real quick. Wild. So we've seen LeBron. You just saw Stephen A. and Charles Barkley. You made that endorsement in 2020. Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made... Uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then when we talk about, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. Woo. Now I have a question. Dwayne, Dwayne, you have a big platform. That is a very, very honest, ballsy statement. Miami. Uh, all the whiners Miami. are going to come out. Now, can you also get Mario Cristobal to maybe open up the offense that it's okay to score 45 <laughs> points a game? We have Cam Ward. So I can you change? So way. can you, can we be a pass first? Can we use a little up tempo? Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, I did not know where Steve was going with this. I didn't know that's where he was going. <laughs> well, I read the story on Dan Hurley. I'm like, hey, I know a football coach that can open up his approach and try to actually blow people out. Anyway, hey, by the way, guys, uh, interesting discussion. What's, what's Mitlock saying? No, no, hold on, hold on. Steve, about to say something, Steve. You messed, you messed him up. Hey, uh, interesting discussion I had with Matt before all the screaming um, about the clean locker room thing. I, I do remember about – Seven, eight years ago, Ed Reed did an interview. And Ed Reed was so sick and tired of the Baltimore Ravens locker room looking like a garbage dump and underwear on the ground that he had a team meeting, players only, and say, guys, I know we have workers here. They should not be relegated to picking up your fucking underwear. Mm. And if you do not have enough personal pride and respect for other people to pick up your underwear and to put simple things in the trash and where they belong, how can we win a Super Bowl? That was the 2012 team. He Steve. said these little things matter. Yeah, Steve, it matters. I, yes, I don't, do. I don't understand why Smitty and Matt refuse to understand this. Hold I on, guess what? they haven't coached. I guess because they haven't coached. Hold I don't know. No, 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 no coach. You hold on. Jump though. me into the conversation. Yeah. It, it do matter. All I say is that this type of stuff happens in every single locker right. room. And, and coach and Dion's coaching up against it right now. He's right, coach. I doing. give Dion credit for right. saying, "Hey guys, would you grow up?" I ain't mad. I, see, this is right. I think the I think Dion's actually doing. Now you could you can argue that he shouldn't put it out on tape or video and bro. I get it. But I like the fact Dion is actually saying, hey, guys, get the class, shut up, and pick up your damn Thank underwear. You. Like, I actually do think – now, there's another story. But, again, the culture you set is also the culture you bring in. Jimmy Johnson, in his latest book, Swagger, talked about a story where he was at Oklahoma State. And they, were at, they had a recruiting function. A lot of recruits were there. And this one running back recruit they really liked was in line for the food, and he dropped a piece of chicken, and he saw it. And he just mm. kept walking on. And Jimmy saw it. And he said, this kid won't even pick up the chicken and put it in the trash or let someone know. He told his assistant, that guy's off our list. It mm. matters. <laughs> I'm just yeah. telling you. <laughs> I, and so a lot of this is like, who are you bringing into your program? What are the things that you expect? There, look, there's a saying that Mario Cristobal uses that I love. And this is not about his coaching. I know. If you, look, there is no such thing as a little thing. A thing is a thing. It all matters. It all matters. Because you do a lot of little things wrong, guess what? It ends up being a big problem. 100%. I remember at Ball State, man, like before our workouts, if if you were, if your feet 
was not, if everybody's feet wasn't behind the line perfectly, not an inch above and not an inch on it, we're getting punished. If everybody's yeah. shirt wasn't tucked in right, but not, not at six, before six, and where yeah. everybody lined up, we're getting punished. Every single detail matters. So I agree with that 100%. Yeah, and I don't really mind Dion. I mean, again, Coach may be right. Maybe you don't advertise it and blast it out to everybody. But I'm glad Dion is addressing it. I just, I don't, you know, what's, I mean, because then you can say, well, if he doesn't say anything, well, again, he's not doing his job. Steve, thank you, Steve. Thank so, you, Steve. Oh, my God. Like, that would be the issue if he if he didn't address it. That'd yeah, be the issue. Anything, he's Coach. addressing it, JB. Like, what I are we doing? Like don't shake your I, head. Don't do that, JB. JB. You guys both. You guys both just missed a huge. Oh, oh get come off. on, homie, homie! <laughs> me screaming homie. like Matt, Oh, never mind, my throat. Oh, God. come on, homie! It's early in the morning. God, God hey. You know what I would like to see, Steve? You know what I would like to see, Steve? Nothing. Nothing. Right. I would oh, like no, to see no, him no, no, address no. it. I would like to see him address it. Quiet, He's not on Netflix, is he? You, huh? You was on Netflix. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is he on a Netflix documentary? Yes or no? He, he has an Amazon not. documentary. No, no, yes. no. Not Amazon. Not moving the goalpost, Smitty. Right now, is he on Netflix being filmed? Is he probably? He's, no, no, he's, no, he's on Amazon. No, yeah. his show, his show, his school, his being the head coach is not on Netflix right now. So, but you need footage. Why do you? But why you would you? Show no, wait, wait, Jamie, hold on. You had the biggest football show. Hold on, Jimmy. You had the biggest football show of all time. Filmed everything. You allowed it. You either coach it. You either coach it or you allow it. You That's allowed them cameramen in there. They filmed everything and you allowed it. And you That's my point. Criticize if it's guy. not, and if I don't have it, have I'm not it. showing it. I don't have to show it. I'm not. You don't, showing no, 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 you. coach. But that's a different, separate issue. I don't necessarily look. I don't think that you need to show everything, but at least there is evidence that Dion to is trying to at least coach these kids in life. Like God, to pick up after yourself. Be a courteous human being. Like if I go to a restaurant or fast food place and I throw my wrapper and I miss it, I pick it back up because I'm not going to, well, they have workers to pick it up. Come on, just show a little common courtesy and decency. Hey, by the way, guys, um, high recommendation from the old Kimster here. Um, Julian Edelman does a series of podcasts. I think the game within the game or something. He did a three-hour interview with Ernie Adams, who's the football researcher for Bill Belichick, one of the most mysterious, knowledgeable men. I learned a lot. I, I think anyone that wants to coach, know football, learn about football, or just a Patriots fan should take time out to watch this. I listened to it over the weekend. I, I think I became a more knowledgeable guy. Ernie Adams, this is the guy, Smitty. He played football at in high school. He was a top teammate of Bill Belichick. They played on the offensive line together. Mm. He's a guy that literally had a headphone and in the head in the box. In certain points of the game, he'd say, Bill, two-point conversion here. That's what that's what it says. That's what, or he would say, Bill, we need to go nickel. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy that basically talked Bill Belichick into not settling for overtime in the first Super Bowl. He explained why. The guy's a brilliant football mind, um, vociferous reader. So anyone that wants to learn about football, the structure of football. What goes on within a team? The thinking of Bill Belichick. It's the best two hours and 47 minutes I've spent in a very long time. Wow. Bernie right. Adams. And you said, yeah. you said it's what? It's, a, it's, a, it's his podcast, right? It's a podcast from Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman they brought him podcast. in here. Julian does a, right. his own network or his own show. And he brings in, I think he's had Reggie Bush on recently. He's going to have Ty Law on. And it's really fascinating in the mind of that Patriot organization. But Ernie Adams is basically the guy when it came to the game and clock management. He basically makes it easy for Bill. Like, Bill, we need to go for two points here. Or, Bill, there's a game that he was actually uh, like. And what he'll do is every game he would go right behind the opposing team's quarterback and gauge their velocity. And he said, one time I looked at Tyrod Taylor, who was a good backup, and he said to Bill, we can zone him all day. He throws knuckleballs. Mm. He goes, now, he goes, if I saw a guy like John Elway, I'd tell Bill, we better play man. We If he plays zone, he's going to carve us up. And there was one day where they played the uh, Tennessee Titans, and it snowed. 
and he noticed that the Titans were wearing the wrong cleats and they were slipping all over. And mm. he goes, oh. So he goes over to the maintenance crew at the uh, at the stadium. He goes, hey, guys, be very, very slow. Don't knock off the snow. We want the snow. So before the game, he sees Floyd Reese, the Titans GM. He goes, hey, Floyd, you guys got the wrong shoes on. We're going to blow you out. Scores 59 nothing. And if you watch that game, Titans look like ice capades. They could not get their feet right. And it was the funniest thing. And Ernie said at halftime, we had one guy with the shovel. <laughs> so people will bring up Spygate. They're going to bring up the Flake Gate. Look, they were a smart football organization. So Julian Edelman, Ernie Adams, look it up on YouTube. Great stuff. Steve, um, this is how you address a team. Fuck! Oh. Hey, so tired we want to quit this shit, bro. Hey! Listen up. I found two pieces of gum down there on the turf. Blatant disrespect, one. Two, if I find out who it is, you obviously cut. Three, if it happens again, I'll fucking forfeit the other game. It's fucking horse shit. I ain't got nothing to lose. I'll go one and nine, but I'll have the fucking best field in the motherfucking nation. But you want to piss on my shit? Hands down, hips down. We'll go until I'm tired. Hurry up! <laughs> and, and that's, you know what, coach? We're for that. Go hands on. down, hands down. You go to I'm tired. I hate when a coach Steve would say, "You keep you run or you do this until I'm tired." That's the worst thing you can ever hear as a player. Because yeah, they don't get tired. Probably Steve. deserved it though. Yeah. But Smitty, thing, though. It, it probably came to a point where you earned that. Steve, he, he said, he said we can go one and nine, but I had the best damn field in the next. Right. Well, little <laughs> things matter. Here's the thing, though, Steve. Up. When you bring when you bring in mercenaries, as I have done my yeah. entire life. If there's no culture for the mercenaries to step into, you all you have is prison. Mm. So the mercenaries have to come into a culture. UConn's men's basketball team went back to back with an entirely new team this year than last year. They lost five to the NBA. They got a few transfers, but guess what? They walked into a culture. Dion is making a lateral stretch to bring in mercenaries to defend his son, Shiloh and Shador and Hunter, who's now adopted. Those three have become the protected protected by mm. mercenaries. When you bring in mercenaries, you end up getting a shitty ass culture with locker rooms, trash, disobedience, undisciplined. I'm just saying, don't film it while you mold the culture. I, but you this is Dion. Steve. You don't have to show everything, I, Steve. Look, I don't disagree, but the son has his own. I, I think, Smitty, isn't that YouTube channel there's run by the other son? That's the oldest son does. The kind of, he has free play. range. He has free right. range. The oldest so, son. Yep. This is what it is. Like, look, I'm in an era now where every boxer does road work like, and then films it. And everyone's supposed to be inspired by it. And I'm like Chris Rock. You did what you're supposed to. Fighters are supposed to run. I, this is just what it is. I don't, like, they're not going to, and especially with Dion, his brand is about exposure. So I, I'm with you. If you are, I, I saw one video last year after one of their early games. I think it was the Colorado State battle that they had. And. They came right up upon a couple of these old, bigger white guy offensive linemen just trying to eat breakfast. And they had a look like, huh, God, get that camera out of my face. Not So you have to understand, if you go to Colorado, or specifically if you play for the Dallas Cowboys, you have to know when you're in their weight room and you're squatting 600 pounds, there may be a tour of fans coming together looking at you like a zoo animal. The, an ex-player talked about that. That's different to play for the Cowboys that your privacy becomes more or less a fishbowl existence. So know what you're getting into. This is the issue I have, though. Win first. Show all things. But until you win, you're only – see, this is what the coaching the – co the people that haven't coached will never understand. You are putting your babies in harm's way. The target is getting incredibly – um visible you could you could see the, the 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 target on their chest with the eclipse yesterday like it's becoming so evident and you're not going to get out of that way i'm I just with you but coach the argument is 
we're going to give exposure so we can attract more blue chippers that can help us win. And also, why I mean, do you think we, we, we why do you think we talk about them so much in last year? Why do you think they were the most viewed games every single time they play, especially in the first half of the season? It's because of this. So I get what you're saying, but I'm not even saying you're necessarily like wrong. Like it, it would be more ideal not to film everything, but don't let the fact that it's being filmed take away from the fact that he's still coaching these guys up. Like you know, you, you, Smitty, you're missing the point on as far as what like what what he's doing in the video he's giving them discipline for doing the wrong thing but you're so caught up on the fact that it's a camera recording it that you're just overshadowing and just forgetting about the actual coaching being done within the video go ahead steve smitty it just came to me is colorado buffaloes the ryan garcia of college football oh <laughs> wow uh-oh that, that i can't right, right now and in, 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 we'll see next year we'll see you next year but right now you that's a fair point you got to say that right now. So, I, yeah, it's, it's not a great compliment, but <laughs> I know, I know, I know. That's, a, no, that's what I'm saying. But right now, that's what it is until they, that you got to win. Like JB said, they got to go out here and win. Give me, give me eight, eight wins next year. Like that'd be a huge accomplishment you know, to me for Colorado. Smitty, me and, uh, I, I forgot, you know, the Big 12's pretty deep. Mm. Me and Coach went through the Big 12 Saturday. It's better than I thought. If you look at some of the programs and if you look at top to bottom, I automatically assume that they're not going to be the as good as the Pac-12 was last year. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm just telling you the the Big 12 is actually pretty tough. It's Colorado's not, schedule is favorable though. It's if, favorable, if they handle their but, business. But I think Nebraska is going to be much better in year two of Matt Rule right off the bat. So I think that's a, that's a different game right there. But I think Colorado's going to be a lot better too. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Matt Rule, I wanted to run this by you real quick, Bailey. Uh, Matt Rule, there's a there's a tweet out there that. Bill Belichick basically embarrassed Matt Rule's football knowledge, and then Matt Rule came out on a video. I don't know if you saw this. So smart. I've seen so much that he can make the complex so simple that it humbles you and embarrasses you. I was embarrassed yesterday listening to him, how mm. smart he is, how simple it was. He went, which, what, what, he, how, how, we would, he, went, he went four and a half hours with just with the coaching. Forget the clinic. Like He came in and met with our coaching staff. And um, well, three and a half hours in, I was like, Coach, would you like a water, a cup of coffee? Would you like to use the restroom? Because I desperately had to use the restroom, you know? And he's like, I'm fine, Matt. I was like, yes, sir. Um, and just sitting there and just talking, right? And just his recall from things 15 years ago. Hey, legend right there. And now what, you see Bill walking around in Seattle, Steve, uh, uh -oh. my boy right there, my boy uh, Kafase uh, is up there getting tootled up. Um, good friend of mine. What a resource. Coach, I, I have so much respect for Matt Rule because he is showing respect. Look, does Matt Rule know football? Of course he does. The job he did at Temple should be bronzed. He did a great job. Not an NFL coach. I think he's going to win really big. Big. Uh, with Nebraska, just give him some time. Big Red will be back. He's a solid college football coach. I like the fact that he's not trying to downplay the knowledge of Bel Belichick. Yeah, and that that's showing proper respect, and he, he has an understanding of what that guy knows and what he means. Smitty, I know a classmate of Gar of uh, of Ernie Adams and Bill Belichick. Believe it or not, uh, really? one of the best boxing managers. That's one of my very good friends, Gary Gittleson, Actually, went to Phillips Academy. And he was a year behind Ernie and Bill. He was, and and his roommate was Buzz Bissinger, who was famous for um, writing Friday Night Lights. He's a prodigious writer. Mm. So Gary, I sent him that interview, and we talked about. It. He said, "Steve, Bill Belichick and Ernie Adams, as 16, 17 year olds at lunch, would never be at the cool kids table. They would literally go by their own selves to their own table during lunch. And they'd be drawing up football plays." Wow. Seriously, during lunch, as students, they would actually be going through things like, okay, we do the weak side over under front. And I was like, they go, really? They go, Steve, they do that every day. They go, Steve, these were serious guys. Like, and that's a very accomplished school. That's a school that if you graduate from, you're probably going to Ivy League school. You're going to run your own company. You're going to be something. But those guys were football guys. And Ernie Adams said the first time he ever met Bill Belichick, nobody knew each other. It was the first day of practice. People had the names with the white tape on it. And it said Belichick. Ernie Adams had read Bill Belichick's father's book, which is the like the like the Bible for scouting football. OK, so here he is, a 16, 17 year old kid. He comes up to a guy he never knows. He goes, he goes, hey, uh, Belichick. He goes, yeah. 
He goes, hey, I'm Ernie Adams. I just wonder, did your dad write a football scouting book? And Bella, he said that Belichick, like, holy shit, don't tell me you read that. Like, he was stunned that a kid would read it. But that's what the, that's what Bill Belichick and Ernie Adams were. Like, it does not surprise me that other football coaches are actually in awe of his, uh, his knowledge. Yeah, yeah that's it. why I'm so – Deeply disturbed by this whole mercenary Colorado movement because these kids don't have respect for their elders, forefathers, or anything else. And they can just do what they do. And when they fucking flop, we all now are being victims. No, talk the talk, walk the walk, dog. Don't start none, won't be none. That's my whole take with Matt and, and, and Smitty. Don't start none, won't be none. We must be from different neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see if this approach works. Uh, right. Let's see it. Lord Jesus. And I hope that Dion doesn't just bail after his son leaves and Travis Ooh. Hunter. I want to see if he has, if he can build a foundation. So that means being there for five, six, seven years at least. And see, can this way work? I, as a fan, would still rather have two thirds at least, if not three quarters of my roster be homegrown guys that we sign out of high school or JC the organic way. They're not recruiting high school, Steve. Well, I, I disagree. Mario Cristobal is doing it the high school way. Um, no, I'm talking about Colorado. They're not recruiting. Well, Colorado, but I'm just saying, I'd actually like to see for the next five years out of the 12 team playoff, there should be a study done on each roster. What is the percentage of high school guys that have stuck through your program and how many guys are transfer portal guys? I want to see what the percentage is that works. Is it 80 20, 90 10, 50 50? You know, I don't think. I think Dion is 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 recruiting protectors, and he's not planning on being there for you. Wouldn't build lateral instead of vertical if you were going to be there for years and years and years. It just don't make sense. You're you're protecting your kids for now. They're going to be gone next year, and then I want to see what Dion does. Is he going to stand on business like they say? Well, coach, coach, the other issue. If you're going there strictly as a mercenary and because of one man. Here's the problem for Colorado. If that one man leaves, that thing's going to look like LAX, the Southwest Terminal on that last flight to Vegas on a Friday night. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, geez. Now loading uh, Group C30, and there's still going to be a big line of people. You're going to see the real exodus. Yeah, people with two <laughs> carry-ons, and there's no more overhead space. I hate that. <laughs> Steve, I would ask you about women coaching, uh, but I'm not going to dive into that today. You know my but, uh, answer. I, I can't argue no more. I ain't got it. Hey, whatever, <laughs> hey, whatever y'all say the rest of the day, it's true. Yep, you right. <laughs> that, Everything you say is correct. Hey, we may be getting a studio out by you. Oh, okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> he don't care about nothing. He's like, I still ain't showing up. I'm still going to be remote. I, <laughs> you got to call in. <laughs> right. Hey, Steve, uh, there's nothing on NBA, so. Eh, I'll pass. I'll re I'm going to read a few books. I'm getting, I got a good selection of books, so I'm good. Ernie, Steve, you you live a really good life, man. I, I, I'm gonna tell you, I am happily jealous of you, Steve, in a good way though. Like, like the 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 goal of how you live your lifestyle. I think you and JB, you guys are fully in a point where you can live life freely in the way that you want to do, Steve. And I applaud you. Yeah, I'm dependent it, on my co-host. I'm dependent honor. on my co-host. Steve is not. If my co-host ah! fucks up, I'm out. All right, fellas. <laughs> All right, talk to you guys later. Later. All right, dude. Woo! No break. It's 814. You might as well go in and end the show now, man. I'm about to go give me something to eat, something to drink, man. I'm about to do some push-ups and just go from there, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Let's take five, man. I got to take a pin. Uh, I'm going to help Smitty. He got a little bladder, a little wee-wee. I'm going to help Smitty out. I got a He's pipe. That's why I can't hold it. We're going to take a break, and then I'm going to get me a coffee, and then... I'll be right back. Hey, Matt, what's up? Oh, come on in. Uh, well, I'll see you in five minutes. Here, this is the infamous one of the palm trees that Ash ate. So Can't fucking believe you. See this fucking duck? You see him? Who just eats a whole fucking palm tree, man? You guys are fucking shit. This fucking unearthly motherfucker. Ate the whole fucking thing. Like, who eats a whole fucking popsicle?
Like, you fucking shit me? Are you fucking shit me? No, let's check now. Who did it? I'm gonna look at the fucking camera. Who fucking did it? Sit down. Sit down. Sit. Sit down. Now, do we understand each other? Excuse me. There is no more fucking up palm trees. I'm tired of spending all this money. And now I've created a whole fucking barricade for you. So I don't want to have to dig this bitch out. I'm fucking dead. I'm old. My back hurts. I'm fucking stiff as a porn dick. Come here. Sit down. Sit down. Boy, if you don't sit your ass down. Now, you come over here with me. Come on. Here's what I had to do. To fucking stop you. And I got a, a better, beautiful, bigger tree. So now we are shitting in tall grass. Replanted it, bitch. Soiled it up. Put a little trellis in here. Put a bunch of fucking stones. Look like Stonehenge around this bitch. And now, Ash, are you going to fucking try to dig this bitch out? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do this again? So I had to ask, remember this? Remember you ate this? Did you do this? He ate once. I put this little moat around it. And uh, just a sitting area. Come over here. We got the plastic basketball court and driving range. So if I ever want to pull out the big dog, that's our net. All we do is just slap down our driving range, you know. And bam, swing away. And that's where we swing into the net. Jimmy crack corn on this hoop. And here's my RV parking where I park the whips. Let's take you out and show you a few. Out these double gates, I'll show you a few cars. Come on out. So right here, of course, is the bad boy. The last custom, last year they made this Cadillac EXT, one of a kind. Can't find these anywhere. Um, and then you come out here, you got the 650i, BMW, rag top, 500 to the rear, white interior. You know, you can't beat it. This is my baby though, my truck. Full sound, custom sound system and bolt. Top notch, only as I do. And obviously, this is my crib. Oops. All right, that's JB's Cribs. Appreciate you jumping by, coming by. Listen, time to go. Now take your asses and get the hell out of here. I'm about to go cook some slap thick tri-tips. Been a pleasure. Now go home. Peace. Get to look down on the property. That'll do it. Real close JB's, JB's Cribs, peace. I carry this show. God damn, man. It's just, it's, it's like I got broad shoulders and shit, but you know, I carry this show. Brought to you by Callahan Auto. Um, it's the realest show on planet Earth. That's what fucking happened. Jack Barber Jr. Shit. What, what, what? Are you hurt? Are you hurt by an argument with two grown men? 
Like, and this is why this show is unmatched, unrivaled, unmatched. This is why it needs to break the algorithm, which it may never because of fucking I cuss. Uh, but this is why it needs to be on a national fucking network. <laughs> Period. Because you don't get this nowhere else. Do you want PC? Then go somewhere else. I don't know. Shit. This is the most raw, uncut show on planet Earth. Period. If you dis- if you disagree with that, then you're just a hater on me. Like you say, I'm a hater on Dion. <laughs> um, pound the like. Can you-, you can't even pound the fucking like. You just want free entertainment because it's the realest show. But you won't subscribe. You won't become a member. You won't buy no merch. You won't buy a fucking uh, book. You won't fucking become a member of Winnable. You won't do shit. You just want the free entertainment. Well, shit. I'm tired of getting bent over. This show needs to be blown up. You fucking need to blow it up. Um, It's up to you guys to blow it up. Let's dive into something real quick. I want to dive into something. Um, Because I don't know if anything is understood or anything out there is going on. But all I do know is that Smitty just texted me and said that like, he don't know if he could do the show and blah, blah, blah. And then I got a message from him saying that he needed a break and take a fucking rest. And I'm like, what sounds like Sarah upside down Coke bottle all over again. So I'm like, well, come what the fuck, homie. So then he's like, his brother's going to pop on just for a few minutes until he cools down. So I don't know his brother. I haven't got to meet him, but I'm going to L.A. As soon as the show ends, we're going to end the show a little bit early. I'm headed to L.A. to look at a studio. So whether I'm by myself or not, I'm getting a studio. We're going to do this thing in person. If it's just me, if it's Smitty, if it's his brother, I think his brother's name's Dan Rail. Uh, listen, Bailey, Bailey just told me that he's ready. Uh, I'm not kidding, Jada, by the way. Um, let's see what his fucking brother is. I, don't, I hope his brother's not a weirdo. Oh, fuck. What's up, man? What's up, homie? What's going on, Jason? Nice to meet you. It's been a, it's been a long time coming. You're Smitty's real brother. Yeah, unfortunately, we we don't get along as much. You know, we were separated at birth and came back together around, you know, teenage years. We're just a little different from personality perspective, but we're trying to get a little back closer now that we're both adults. And, you know, he's he's making a little bit of, of an effort to, you know, get back close. But one thing about Darnell, that's an emotional cat, man. So I'm here filling in for him for the time being. Are you a tard? Excuse me? I don't... What exactly is a tard? Are you slow? No, I mean, I, when I play... I used to play football, I ran pretty fast. I think I ran, you know, 4'7", four, 4'8". Four, For my size at the time, it's pretty good. I mean, mentally. No, I'm very fast mentally. I'm very fast mentally. Very smart. You know, I you know, times table, I was always the first kid to get done. I just listen. I just really into the books. I tried to play sports. It wasn't my thing. And I think that's kind of where me and, and, and Darnell kind of separated a little bit. We didn't really fully understand each other from that standpoint. But I'm getting back into sports from the analytical side. And J- Jason, I'm a big fan of yours. I used to watch your show, um, Last You Chance, and on, on Netflix. And it was, a, it was an awesome show to see in the perspective and how you got Last, last got Chance You. Oh, sorry. Last Chance You. I apologize. But yeah, it was an awesome show. I'm just honored to be here. What happened with you and um, that McChesney guy? You guys got in a pretty heated argument. You guys are close. Nothing. Just normal men's talk. Men, grown men, real men. Got That's it. what we do. We talk. We talk through our issues and uh, disagreements. Great conversation comes from disagreements. That's all. I, I love that, man. And that's why I wanted to be on this show because the wisdom that you just bring out is just is phenomenal. And nice to meet everyone in the chat. I see the chat. There's so many comments going on right now. I just thanks for the I just appreciate the love. I, I'm not used to getting this. I'm a little insecure and 
the fact that I'm I'm even here right now is a little nerve wracking, but I'm here and I'm excited. Do you feel that females should coach in the NFL? You know what? That's one thing that me and my brother actually disagree on. I don't think that women should coach in any male sports. It's it's called male sports. It should be ran by male. It's a men's organization. Everything in the organization should be men. The janitor should be a man. The waiters and the wait, there should be no waiters. It should be all waiters and servers are men. The 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 owner should be men. GM should be men. Players should be men. Kicker should be men. The llama should be men. Olama should be men. Robert receiver should be men. Quebec should be men. Everybody should be men. Well, I think they should be. Uh, that's my take. I'm glad you're on there. Maybe I'll have you on more with this. Uh, maybe I'll have this on uh, more. Maybe you'll come on more. Uh, I, I will be an honor. Pay you. I'm not paying your brother. Maybe I can pay you because I think I like your takes better, actually. You're not paying. Hold on. Darnell has been talking all this mess about he's big money Smith and he's telling mom that he makes the money and making us all proud and he's broke. <laughs> Oh, shocks. I can't believe this guy's been lying. I don't know if he's broke. I don't know if he's broke, but I think he has a job, right? He has a job, right? I he works at Fox, but he's kind of low level. You didn't hear from me, though. You didn't hear from me. <laughs> he got took off TV when that guy was it uh, uh, Lockwit left and he got off TV after that. Whitlock. Whitlock, yeah, that's his name. Whitlock. <laughs> you gotta meet my brother one day. Maybe you can bring him tomorrow. You have a brother? I have a brother, yeah. What's his name? His name's Jabron. Much more masculine than you. Well, I'm a pretty masculine guy. I don't. I think my voice doesn't fully showcase my personality, but we'll love to meet Jabron. I mean, I'm available tomorrow for probably about 15 or 20 or so. You let me know when Jabron can join, and we can maybe make this thing happen again. Um, do but you, I will. No, do you go live ahead, with your brother. Excuse me. Do you live with your brother? Well, I'm staying here right now. I uh, I do live in uh, near. I live in San Diego, but I, again, we're trying to get our relationship back going a little bit. So I came out here for the week. So I'll be here up until Sunday. So uh, I'm actually staying at his house right now, and I don't know what he was a little emotional after that commercial break. But I just saw that he walked into the apartment. Looks like he has his little juice in a granola bar. I don't know if he had to get some food, but. He's telling me I got to go, and this is his house. So it was a pleasure meeting you guys. Let me know if you want me tomorrow. We'll would love to meet Jabron. And chat, I love you guys. Continue to support this show and this awesome man because he's a man's man, and men rule the world, and men should coach men. Pleasure to meet you, Coach. Thank you, Jabron. Clap it up for uh, Dan Rell. Dan Rell. I mean, goddamn. I may have to holler at him to be the co-host of the show. I mean, it is a man's world and uh, in the sport. And, and when we talk about sports and he agrees to that, I mean, shit, I'm very shocked. Wonder who raised him. Like, did his, did Smitty's same mother and father raise him? Oh, Smitty's back. Hey, ho uh, homie, who mm -hmm. raised your brother? That dude's a weirdo, bro. I love him, but you know who, you ra weird. who raised them? Your mom and dad, same per same parents. It was a weird story, man. So we got we got separated at birth. Somebody grabbed, like somebody grabbed him, like the wrong family grabbed him. So for the longest, I didn't even know I even had a brother. You know, my I was raised by my parents, reg like my regular parents. They eventually told me as I got older that I had a brother, and a situation happened. They did their research, whatever. They ended up finding him like years later, and we were able to reconnect around our teenage years. But he's like, he was halfway raised by, by my parents and his parents, but he was halfway raised by like the people who stole him. So that's why our personality is a little different. He a weird dude. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I had to go get some food, and he'd been begging to come on the show. So I said, you know what? Hop on there real quick. Do your thing. I know it's a little weird, but I mean, he, he my actually brother. agrees that men should coach men and everything. Figures. <laughs> no perspective. You know what I I bet you he agrees with too? What? That 
I don't know if you've seen it, but in Seattle, Seattle has some going on with the judicial department. And I just couldn't imagine me having to get like a like a pro bono attorney or like a public Pause. defender. And then I go to the public defender and this pops out. Let me check on that. <laughs> So we were talking A6, A45? Yeah. That works for me? All right. Do I need to sign anything? No. I'm just out of here. <clears throat> my comment about my client? Yeah. I just met her. She's really nice. She's really smart. She sounds like she's got the right idea about things. I really support what she's up to, and I think it's fabulous. How about that? God, it, do you, she's accused of, what is it, criminal trespass. In the first degree, yes. Is she innocent or guilty? She's innocent, of course. She's innocent, okay. Well, she's it? caught on video being arrested and protesting and allegedly protesting. Uh -huh. in front of so I'm trying to get all sides. So I well, my client has pled not guilty. My name is Stephanie Mueller. I'm in the uh, directory for the Washington State Bar Association. You can look me up. Okay, so Stephanie, thank you for your time. At this point, it, your client is being arraigned, though. It's all just happened. Her her hearing is over. Got it. It's done. All right. Do you know when her next? Usa. Usa. Um. Why was, its name is Stephanie. Why was her? Why was her voice? Why was her voice so deep? It. Its name is Stephanie. Um. This is why women cannot coach men in the NBA, Smitty. This is what you have to understand. Is what's coming down the pipe, Smitty. This is why the women cannot be the head coach. Let me rephrase. Let me retract my statement. Women can coach in the NBA, and I think they should. They're very capable. I don't believe a woman should be a head coach of men in any sport because of situations like this. The delusion is flooding our brains. The delusion is flooding our brains. Did you drink? Uh, did you? Are you okay? Because you had a lot of drink there. Um, the delusion is flooding our brains. Did you see that motherfucker's nipples? <laughs> the motherfucker's was hard as shit. Bro got, bro got triple Z's. But look out the nipple just poking out like it's a it's a it's like a laser beam. <laughs> I he can shoot it can shoot out of him. There's no way I could call that thing Stephanie. If she if she put her hands on you, like what would you do? I, I fuck choke the shit out of it. I'm I'm just saying, dog, like imagine Smitty, real shit. Like I've been accused, falsely accused of 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 of, of things, right? I, I'm sure we all have. But but legality wise, criminally, I've been accused falsely, mm -hmm. and I had to say, "Fuck no, I ain't pleading to shit that I didn't do," which I did, and of course I won. Clearly, no issue. Here's the problem I have. Imagine come out of court and that motherfucker greets you as your public defender, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" Well, my name is Stephanie, and I'm here to get you off all fucking charges. Are you ready to? to are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you ready to fight this good fight? <laughs> Motherfucking <laughs> titties is out in your face. I got titties and nipples. And I, I, my name is Stephanie. I'm ready to fight the good fight. Are you? I'm also ready to fucking club the fucking offensive tackle and put that motherfucker in the QB's lap. Are you ready? To <laughs> Why you sound like a superhero? Watch your voice sound like a superhero. Did you hear that motherfucker? Da -da -da. Holy, holy. Did you hear the fucking voice? I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Just me, just reenact, reenact this with me. Like I'm walking out. Okay, I just, I just got fucking horrible news. Jason Brown, please stand. Yes, Your Honor. We are charging you with uh, the felony accusations of A, B, C, D. 
How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Please be, uh, your arraignment will be set for February 21st. Please go outside and meet with your public defender as, what is it? Uh, she is awaiting you. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, I'm going to walk out. Yeah. Bailey, cue it up. Bailey, show what I'm walking out to. I'm walking out to court. I'm walking out to meet my fucking public defender. And what is your name, sir? She sounds like she's got the right idea about things. I really support. Excuse me? What? 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 <laughs> Judge, convict me now. Please take me to jail. I did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am 1,000% guilty, Your Honor. Take me to jail. Lock me up. Throw it away the key. Throw away the key. <laughs> Fuck, homie. What is the world coming to, Smitty? But you're okay with a woman oh. coaching us? <laughs> I love when JV, he, he somehow flips it all the way back. See, this is why women shouldn't coach. He do this all the time. We were talking about some shit has nothing to do with it. We were talking about, did you watch that Netflix show? And those fuckers murdered that dog behind the damn police station? And, and Smitty thinks women should coach football? I'm like, what? Where did that come from? Okay, let me, let me ask you a question. Are okay. you disgusted by that guy? Yes. Okay. So... Everybody in the chat, you guys all fucking know Smitty's not okay with it, so fucking understand that. I know this, too. Smitty would not be my co-host if he was okay with that, okay? There's a huge line there. Stop it. JB, I think what it is is, like, the, a lot of people in the chat, they're fans of you, as they should be. And you're very, like, uh, you're going to say it with your chest. You're going to curse. You're going to say it vulgarly. You're going to – they want me to be exactly like you. And since I say stuff differently, they take that as – Oh, Smitty just saw. Oh, his his wife run his household. Oh, he just he just he he he, he copied. He's he's doing stuff for fire because he don't, he ain't real. He just lying. I'm like everything I do on this show is real. I just do it my way. Me and JB are not the same people, but we respect each other and re we respectfully disagree. That's my homie, but we just just we just do things differently. They want the same person. Like in a perfect world, they would want two JBs on the show. Yeah, that's not possible. Like you make, arguing with yourself doesn't make a good show either. It don't doesn't make sense. Make doesn't make a good show. And it's too hard to do these shows by yourself. It just gets old. Let me ask you. Let me let me let me dive into something real quick, though. Um, the NAIA banned those made up humans we just saw that are defending our general population uh, in, 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 in Seattle, Washington. But the NAIA has the nuts in the brass to come out 25 0 vote and say no more made up humans can play against our natural born female i i we love it why is the ncaa not adhering to the same rhetoric like why do they allow this they are the big dogs this is when i talk about the minority controlling the majority there's no way that the majority thinks that the NCAA should allow Leah Thomas, who has a foot the size of a flipper, to race against natural-born women. It just doesn't make sense. And this is why I truly think there's a fundamental issue when we allow women, who we both agree cannot raise a boy and turn him into a man by herself, but yet we're okay with her leading a man of men. Men of men sports. Um, I just don't see the correlation. I just think there's a cutoff point that we have to draw in the sand at some point. I love the inclusion of women being assistants. I'm fine with that. Being a head coach when it comes to nut cutting time, brass tacks. It's not a nature of a woman to cut you to make that tough decision. Just not. It's not a it's not a woman's role. That's not what they're they're they were. Listen, there's some we know there's I know there's some badass women out there. I only fuck with badass women. I I, I want I want the Chris's and the Lucy's and the Jada's and the, those women like that. And like I, Coach Yo, Coach Yo, a real one. 
Yeah, you know I know she would cut your ass in a heartbeat, oh, man or woman. Unbelievable. I would. I only would fuck with somebody that has a strong opinion, but she knows how to be a woman too. Like I think there's a missing part of this. Like if we look at the women, like no offense, we're looking at the women that are playing or coaching. Uh oh. The coach that we just saw that's going from the the woman that's going from the uh, the the G League to the NBA to get an interview possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, Former first round overall pick, Lindsey Harden. Yeah, yep. she 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 looks like a broad I used to fuck with. By the way, she look she, she bad, right? Bad broad, bad. F- female, fine female. You know what I'm saying? That even makes it worse for me. But when we look at the thing, when we look at this, um, I love a confident, sexy woman. No question about <laughs> she, it. She's like a female I used to fuck with. I'm sorry, that's funny. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bad one. She. I'm trying to figure out though, like, why would I want that beautiful motherfucker to coach me up? Like, I just don't want that. It's not what a man should have. A man should have a man coaching a motherfucker up. Come home to that beautiful woman. What did you say? What did you say? You said why I want that what? This is my rationale, man. You said why you want that what, JP? Why do I want that bad motherfucker coaching me? Shut your sexy ass up, coach. I mean, it's gonna. Uh-uh. I mean, it's going to get to that. <laughs> Three man weed with your bad ass. Come here, girl. I mean, it's going to get to that. It's going to get to that. I'll pick, a, I'll pick and roll for you. <laughs> JB's crazy, bro. Hey, girl, can you come over to the house and show me how you, you want that matchup zone to play? <laughs> You're insane, JB, for real. See, hey, clap it up for JB, man. This dude is a personality, man. Clap it up for JB. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. This has been a hell of a week for you. It's been a hell of a week for you. This is a two-day phenomenon. It's been great. Go ahead and press it, baby. Go. My, my wife blended her smoothie, so. Coach Cisco said, hell no. Nah, no female coaches in men's sports. And he said, no men coaches in female sports. So, Gino is a, the, the 11 rings. We talked about that earlier today. Imagine if we didn't let him coach out. We would miss out on history. <laughs> you, think a, you think a woman could do that with men? Yeah, I don't know. You know what, though? I ain't going to lie. I'm going to put you on the spot. You don't think you don't think coach you really like real for real like no no show it's me and you off camera you don't think coach Joe could coach some men up for real and get them and get them going a little bit like, keep it like keep it real like keep for, it funky for, yeah for for like a week or two and then it it'll die out Smitty like let's be real it it'll, it'll die out there's no knock you know I love Coach Joe to shit to death and we talked yesterday about some of these things uh. I think it would it would she would do it for a couple of weeks and it would last for a few weeks because it was new. The boys right. would respect her as a woman who was right. coaching Division One basketball for Ole Miss SEC. Right. And then after a few weeks, it would be you. The boys in the room would be the laughing stock nationally, and they would start to adhere to peer pressure. And then the peer pressure would kick in and become too daunting of a task for boys to be coached by a female, and especially in a league where you play versus men, coached by men, it would become too daunting. That's a good point. I'm not even gonna argue with you. I'm just gonna give you. A, a, just have a conversation. So we 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 talked about how unfortunately a lot of these college athletes, a lot of black men. Let's be real. And unfortunately, a lot of these black men grow up in single parent households. A lot of times they grow up with just that black woman, right? And, and, and that's the one who's who's leading them. And in, in my head, I feel like me, I'm trying to put myself as an 18 year old. I would almost have more respect or a more respectful approach for that woman because of my upbringing, number one, but also number two, just being real, knowing the backlash that you could potentially get you, if you never, say the wrong thing because I, I i couldn't see myself disrespect a woman we, we're disagreeing to all that but i couldn't see myself like man fuck you man uh, fuck you coach yo you to do, like that ain't even my personality and i don't think i don't think you, don't think you deep, would either i want you to do a deep dive and re- and, and 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 go back right, and do it, think about it. a couple things if you can if you can remember when you're a young boy i want you to differentiate what you came and told or cried to your mother about versus what you told your father about. Mm-hmm. I just want you to think about those two things. If you can, what would you go cry to your mom about as a boy 
What would you go tell your dad about as a boy? And then tell me the difference is those two things. Because while you think about that, I want to be clear. If a boy cannot be himself around other boys and cannot be a man and talk about his nuts and bitches and go get it and just you cannot ever think in your wildest dreams that you're going to get the most out of another man. That's from, real. I give you that. I can't argue with that one. I from give you that. Female perspective. It just doesn't work. And I didn't know, I, I didn't think I had to go this deep with you or Matt or anyone else to get you to understand that it's just not in, it just wasn't designed this way. And we're breaking code, as y'all say, you, you code switching, you're doing all these things. You can't code switch and be from the hood and then talk about a snitch and talk about code switching and talk about all these things and then not carry that over or correlate it to this situation because this directly affects the boys that we're making into men in the world. Mm. And I'm just telling you, there is a fundamental difference between estrogen and testosterone. There's a fundamental difference in how you speak to a boy as a man and how you speak to a girl as a man, how you speak to a boy as a woman. There is just a fundamental difference that should not be fucking played with. God did not make it this way. And you are a man of Christ, a man of the Bible. Amen. Read the Bible enough. And listen, I'm not like a religious guy. No, nah, you, you come on. You God fearing. No, keep going. You good. Yeah, but I, I know the Bible more than most for the fact that I was raised by a crooked Christian. Ooh. So he, not my dad either. So he, this man would fucking tell me all these things and read me the Bible and all this old shit. To Come to find out he was living a fucking lie. He was a piece of shit. So that's when I had a full on understanding that priests and politicians are the most criminal ass people on this planet, on this earth. And when I found out that I was going to go do my own research and find out if uh, what he read to me was real or not. I said, I'm going to do my own due diligence and go read the Bible myself and read some some different books. So I did that as a youngster. And it's still, I know a lot of it. That's why I say some things on the show. The Bible will tell you if you're a God-fearing man who walks by faith, not by sight, which I have tattooed on my right calf. Mm -hmm. Um, If we're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight and have an understanding, clear understanding that who controls or runs the household who in the bible is the head of the household men clear cut. men of the household yes okay. of the household so the covenant strictly says that in the covenant the man is the hierarchy the woman is next and you shall love your wife more than your own daughter or son yes facts okay. so if that is the case how can you come and have even a thought that a woman mm. is now going to reverse the role and take over that particular fucking role and coach men. Ooh, How? You can How so let, you let me ask you this that? then. How, homie? Because we bring the Bible into it then. Let me ask you this then. So, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Saying, we're talking about Christianity. Yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about Christian over here. See, and I'll let you finish. No, you're not, you're finish but here's my take on this. People are going at all the people that have questioned the Don Staley take. So Don Staley comes out and everyone says, well, she shouldn't have been asked a political question as a basketball coach. Well, guess what? She shouldn't have dove into the BYU politics when all that race baiting shit happened at BYU. If you're going to play the game, then you have to be under, you have to be able to be refereed in it. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be refereed in the game, then you have to take on all comers. You wanted to be political, but when someone asked you a political question, Don, you chose to answer it in a way that you did, and now you're taking heat for it, and now it's a victim mentality. No, you can't play that game. You chose to be political, Don, in your role as a big-time platform, and then when someone asks you a political question, now all the supporters of Don 
has now defended her saying, why are you asking a political question? Well, you ask Malky, it's a political question every day. I don't see anyone bitching about that. So I'm just trying to say, you got to be able to understand that if you're going to play with fire, expect to be burned. And I just don't understand if hierarchy in the Bible says that a man is the head of the household in all things, and he shall love his wife more than his own kids. How can we hand men, our own kids, over to a woman who's not even the head of the household and expect them to be men? There's a fucking big thing in this, Smitty. It goes deep. It goes so deep. And I'm afraid that we're making our boys turn into beta males mm. and the females are alpha. And that is not how it is designed. Hallelujah. You <laughs> preaching right now, JB. I don't even feel like, I don't even, I mean, you said a lot. See, thing about JB, when he give his take, he going to say like, he going to give you like five takes within his take. So it's almost hard to even like combat them because it might be one thing he said that you disagree with and that you, you was prepared to argue with. But then he says two other things that you actually agree with that makes you forget about the one thing that you didn't. So it's like you kind of get so now I'm at a point where I'm speechless. That was a hell of a take. I, I'm just overall was a take. There's some things in there I didn't agree with overall. I think I agree well, with I, more I than what you said. You can't remember. <laughs> but it was, Hey, Marcellus told me that shit too. He's like, man, you should be a fucking the, the debater uh, extraordinaire because you fucking say so much shit. You're like, hey, motherfucker can't really fuck me because he can't remember all the shit he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Even Matt, before he, before y'all started cutting each other out and fighting a lot on live TV, he was like, you you had asked this question. He's like, okay, well, I'm going to try to unpack all of this. Because <laughs> you say a lot and it's like, damn, okay, like. I don't even know, like good shit, like good job, like it's gonna clap it up. Like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> I, look, nah, but I feel you though. I mean, listen, I I agree hey, with a lot though? of this. Guess yeah. what though? When you're done with this whole thing, and let's say it goes the way, not saying it's your way or any way. Let's yeah. say it goes the way we're seeing it go, and there's yeah. more, and there's women starting to coach and all this shit. Hey, Mar speaking of Marcella, look. <laughs> Marcella always say that shit. They need to be saying, you, 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 I gotta unpack a lot of shit right here. <laughs> hey, big dog, I don't know what to. I'm like, hey, just good job. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> he said, I got a gang of shots on goal. <laughs> that motherfucker shoot, ain't he? <laughs> hey, by the way, Marcellus got to be the coldest. Like Marcellus know how to dissect any motherfucker. Like he'll, he'll get anybody in a debate. Like he'll just he'll, Marcellus so smart though. Like he'll kill you with like a calm voice and shit. Like you'd be like, fuck, I want to cuss and shit. That motherfucker. Just, <laughs> Marcel won't cuss at all, but he dang it, he he'll curse you out without without cussing, and, and you won't even understand it till later. You got to go home and like eat. You like, oh, that's what he said to me. You got to call him and argue with him. That it's too late now. <laughs> I learned a lot from Marcel. I, I've stole some of the stuff, but but it's not really stealing because every time I use one of his phrases, I I shout out Marcellus. You plagiarize. You play. That, no, no, no. It ain't. If I cite my sources, it's not plagiarism. You, you plagiarize it, homie. Not if I cite. Not if I cite my sources. Hey, come on now. Let me ask you though. There is this thing called the generational curse. Talk to me. So, Freeway Rick Ross, who raised me, obviously biggest one of the biggest dope deals in United States history. He had kids and other kids that he was around and raised, and then when he used to be, you know, him and Coach Ward, other people would be they were womanizers. Let's be real; we are all probably womanizers at some point. Mm -hmm. They truly believe, and I've what i've read generational curses happen when you treat a certain gender race something a certain yeah. way it'll probably come back to bite you whether you see it in your eyes or not guess what coach ward had five daughters mm. now are you going to want your daughter to be raised the same way that those girls used to chase and do wrong to the same way no so now all of a sudden i got a code switch now I got to go with, oh, shit, I, now, hell no, nah, it's, it's crazy. Like LeBron talking about the squatters next to his house. He wasn't talking that shit a couple weeks ago. Now, all of a sudden, when it affects you, now, all of a sudden, it if yeah. oh, shit, let me, uh, now I got to switch up. I'm code switching. All right, so the generational curse is about to hit when we start to see females coaching men in a men's sport. Mm. 
And now or later on, we're going to wonder why we got so many beta males out here floating around. It's a generational curse, homie. That's not how he designed this thing. If the man is the head of household, that's not how this was designed. If you are a Christian, God-fearing man that but, believes in the word. Yeah, but let me ask you this, though, because I, I hear what you're saying. And listen, we, we, are, we agree that the world has been... They have taken out masculinity in every facet, in branding, commercials, ads, movies. I saw that. I saw they had a woman Terminator a couple years ago. They, they got the She Hulk. They got the Woman Hulk. Like even little stuff like that, little subliminal things they're doing to like uh, take take out the masculinity. Hey, let, every movie, Smitty. Every, every movie. show. Every show. Look at all American female codes. Uh, the, the LBG, the Alphabet Mafia. All everything that. Everything has to be included. included. It's an all inclusive that you've seen it, especially Disney, of course, but you see it all over. I agree. Movie. I'm with you 100%. But let me ask you this then based upon you using the Bible reference as far as the man being the, the head of household, and this is kind of a, another sign or reason why you're saying like a woman shouldn't be the leader of men in a coaching aspect. Let me ask you straight up do you think, and I, I guess I'm putting you on the spot, so you ain't got to answer if you don't want to, but I know you don't care. Do you think women shouldn't be in? Any like leadership position, even beyond sports, based upon based upon again what you're saying from the Bible, head out like you think men should be in all lead positions, regardless like re- re- company, sports, whatever. I do, and I've said okay. it before. I have no issue with saying it. It is what it is. Women are not built to lead. The women now are are going to be quick to tell you they're they're the breadwinner. They're, they don't need a man. Mm. This is the new deal, Smitty. This is all you see. I'm not going to Cheesecake Factory. You, it mm. ain't good enough for me. They are code switching. They're switching it up in front of our very eyes right now because we've allowed it instead of coached it. It's not good for the future generations to think that this is how it's supposed to be done and how it's always been done. It's not true. It's just not, you're breaking history. You're breaking historical facts up here and you're crumbling them and you're not going to put them on that CD that supposedly goes into space for the time, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, historical whatever storage that they say we have out in outer space somewhere. Here's what I got to say. Do you... Would you, let me just ask you, turn it back on you. Would you be comfortable if a woman has the nuclear warheads at her discretion? No, no, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I would, first of all, let me make this clear. I, I ain't comfortable with, with having this shit even, period. But definitely with a woman, because let's be real, women are emotional. Not okay, saying so, men, not saying men are emotional, but women like women often lead with emotions more than men, which is okay. True, so, which is true. So am I turning your uh, am I turning you a little bit here? No, what, what's I, going on? I, I just How think everything is different though. I just think like it is different. Nuclear weapons and coaching basketball is just not the same seriousness, like the same level. So I, I get it, but <laughs> that person coaching basketball is creating a boy that may be a politician one day, even though he's playing sports now. And that's what we disagree at, though. I don't, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, at the pro level, I don't think it's the coach's job to make these boys men. That's where we disagree at. I'm, so that's, that's, I think that's the... Yeah, I disagree. That's been that way. I would love to ask Marcellus that question. Marcellus would probably disagree with you. A guy from Compton that goes to Columbia, I would, ex- I would ex- suspect he would say that some sort of coach had a huge impact on his discipline at the life. college level in high school. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm saying when you, once you become a pro and you're making whatever money Marcellus made, which, which was a lot, and you're making those, that, that number ain't no, you ain't no boy no more. You are the, you are a grown but, man. You don't the just head of your jump. family. You don't just jump and land in that position though. You, you had to go through some type of turmoil, tri- tri- uh, trial and tribulation. You had to go through some sort of, Pecking order to what I go back to earn the mm-hmm. right to do it. So, like, I'm just saying, like, my whole thing is be consistent on your value, be consistent on what your belief is, be consistent on those things. And that is what we've lost. We have lost consistency in society. And we now are okay with girls being boys, boys playing against girls in athletics. We're okay with it. It's it's like a 50-50 fight now. Where back in the day it was nobody believed a boy should play a girl in sports. Not one person you could ever find that. You could never find it. It was common now, sense. 
Now it's an argument and a fight on Twitter. Hell no. Why can't he? What, let him be who he wants to be. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, Come man. on, homie. That stuff's crazy. I never stand on that. You don't have that. a daughter then. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm no, saying no, no. I, I'm, I'm talking to them. Oh, yeah. Like, you must yeah, not you have right. a motherfucking daughter then. Like, let's just keep right. it real. I got a little like, sister. That's so why Marcellus <laughs> came out and said what he said, because he got a daughter. He got a wife. I got a daughter. Uh, you have a wife. I got a little sister and a wife. Yeah, I would never like. Yeah, but... I, I don't get it, dog. I, I don't get it. Common it, sense it, ain't common no more, JB. And now this is what's happening, though. This is being pushed on you so tough. That before you fight the masses, you crumble and you just say, fuck, enough's enough. People get divorced. Why? Because they don't want to work at it. They don't want to go through the fucking hiccups and the bumps in the road along the way. They don't want to go through it. So guess what? They just say, fuck it. Go. Go. Give me 18 grand a month. Like, right. this is this is what they do. They crumble. I'm going to stand on business and I'm going to be the guy that is consistent and don't crumble because we have too many crumbled people out here. we got too many people crumbling and just saying I'm tired of fighting the fight because the minority is controlling the majority and the majority just wants to stay quiet. They think it's going to get better. Tomorrow will be better. It'll be OK. That's what we have a problem with. That's why I'm just going to say no. I'm not accepting of a woman coaching me in the NF fucking L. I'm not. And when you want to cut the balls off the bull, it becomes a calf. So what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I, 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 it's I, don't, called- I don't know what you said, but you just said something. I know that. I, I, I don't I know don't, what you said, but you said something. You need to write that I, down for contrary to belief. That was I, cut the bulls off a off a cow becomes a calf. I, I don't even know what I said. Is that what I said? Something like that. I think sometimes you get in your zone, JB, and like the spirit kind of like takes over your body and stuff just starts pouring out. You know what I mean? And that's what just happened. And you're here. Thank you for the follow, Glizzy. Make sure you uh, you subscribe if you haven't already and join our winnable. We are making you money on the winnable right now. Join the pl- the paid plan. We appreciate you, Glizzy, Joey B, Rob Maxi. Who we got tomorrow on the show, JB? What's tomorrow? Wednesday. We got uh, I think Big Matt is back. Uh surprisingly. We yeah, got Matt um back. who else we got uh, tomorrow? What everybody thought Matt was leaving? Everybody thought Matt was like done. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> chat thought y'all were really like like shootout, like it was that type of level, like it was over. Uh, uh, Matt will be here tomorrow. Uh, we'll also have uh, Keenan Middleton and oh, Thursday we have, we have Sean King. No, and no, no, we'll, no, let's stay on yeah. Wednesday. Stay on Wednesday because then you say Jabron and Dan Real. I think my brother Dan Real said he'll, he'll hop on if Jabron comes on tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's a maybe. Also, oh, maybe. So I'll let Dan know he yeah. not the room and shit. I'll let him know it's a maybe. Hey, Smitty, real quick to end the show. I, we're already passed. I wanted to leave early. I gotta go to LA, but you passed the time right now. Spelling question, spelling, or not a spelling bee, but I want to ask a real life thing. Can you name every capital in every state? No, I can't even name, I, I can't name like none of them, honestly. I'm not, don't put, don't, CJB, no, don't put me on the spot like that. We're not going to do that. No, I can't. Can you, well, let me see if I can. Ask me. I, 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 ask All right, me. every capital, go. Every single capital. No, you got to ask me a state. All right. Um, let's start, let's start, let's start easy. Illinois. Moline? I don't know. No, nah, Moline's Iowa. I Illinois, think I know what it is. Chicago. It's uh hold on. Chicago's not the capital of Illinois, right? I, I mean that's what I would have guessed. I would say Springfield. Yeah, I think I think it's Springfield. I think I just looked it up real quick because I don't know none of these answers. Hold up the state and then just ask me. I'm not touching nothing. Tennessee. Tennessee is Knoxville. Is that right, bud? Let me see. It's Nashville. Is it Nashville? Yep. Okay, go up. Keep going. Okay, let's go with. Let's go with Maryland. Maryland? Yep. Um, fuck. 
You ask all the states I don't know. This is very hard. I know what I'm trying to. That's what I'm saying. You asked me that question. Great. I used to be great at this. I ain't learned this since like third grade. Like this is something that went in one year after the other. I said Baltimore. I shut off the chat, by the way, so I can't see the comment. I said Baltimore. No, it's Annapolis. Oh, it's Annapolis. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. Um, South Carolina. Columbia. Yeah, you got that one. Uh, let me try to give him another one. <sighs> North Dakota. Um, Brisbane. Uh, uh-uh, uh, but but like, but uh, yeah, go again. Huh? Go again, go again, because I find you, I find you, I find you know it. You just kind of ah, like, fuck. It's uh, the it's uh, the other one. God, yeah, it's the other damn. one. Bal- uh, not Balazs. Bismarck. Bismarck. There you go. There you go. I knew you knew that one. Um, Arkansas. Little Rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We could do one more. Delaware. Whew. <laughs> Anytime I'm going to whistle. <laughs> Delaware has to be... Shit, I don't even know a city in fucking Delaware. My all right, I'm giving you a hint. What does my name start with? D. Okay. Denmark. Dover. Ding 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 ding. Dover. It's the only city I know in that fucking state. Yeah, it's the only uh, one. It's the only one that's capital. I don't know where that came from, JB. This is the realest show on planet Earth. You know, JB JB be high off cigars and, and liquor, and sometimes stuff just come in his head and just come on the show. Paul. I think no. we should do live spelling bees, live tests like that, real life test shit like that. All right, we do that middle area show. We do we, we, let's do spelling bees. Me, give me like a real fucking what's a, what's the state of California's capital? Is it Los Angeles? You live do you pay taxes in this motherfucker? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, for real? Okay. I swear, bro, like that don't matter. Indiana State Capital. That don't matter. Any of us. Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Been a great show. (laughs) You guys want to subscribe? Become a member. We'll see you tomorrow for Work Boot Wednesday. By the way, announcement Thursday, Friday show will be from Pat Perez house in Scottsdale. Uh, I'll be leaving. I'll be leaving tomorrow to head to Scottsdale with Pat, uh, John Rom, a few of the boys will be hanging out. Uh, there'll be some people there. Won't be too many cameras because of some people who are going to be there, but we're going to cook. We're going to hang out. We're going to do a few things. We're going to go over to country club, do some other things. Um, so I'll be doing the show live from, uh, PP's house in Scottsdale for the next couple of days after tomorrow. Just heads up. So All right. we'll be back on tomorrow though with Keenan Middleton, Matt McChesney, and <laughs> who knows who else. Shout out to Big Matt, man. Shout out to Big Matt, man. Y'all Good have job. a good one. Y'all have a blessed day. Um, be great. Believe in yourself, believe in, in the vision that you have that's not even there yet. It's called real faith. And uh, if y'all need some, don't hit us up. It's been real. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Betty takes away. Boo. Hold on. Get pressed so passage. Don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown. Kill the 